Understanding women and increasing your dating success starts with Donovan Sharp's massive collection of award-winning books and courses. Get off to a fast start and jumpstart your masculine renaissance with the 49 Laws of Sharp. The 49 Laws of Sharp is the perfect quick start guide for any man new to this community looking for the answers that keep them up at night after a bad experience with a woman. So many men ask themselves, why did she cheat? How could I not see this coming? Why did I miss the signs? And how can I avoid this in the future? The 49 Laws of Sharp will answer these questions and many more. This will give you a rock solid foundation upon which to build, develop, and cultivate your newfound identity and put you miles ahead of your competition. Most men have never had access to this valuable information, let alone understand and apply it. But the 49 Laws of Sharp will give you an unfair advantage over men and women. This treasure trove of valuable knowledge is available in audio, video, ebook, and paperback. Next, supplement your newly acquired foundational knowledge, supercharge your dating life with Donovan's 25-hour course, How to Master the Game. How to Master the Game will teach you the ins and outs of the player life, overcoming approach anxiety, identifying women who you want to approach, text game, first date principles and logistics, avoiding the friend zone, and so much more will be covered extensively. Also included are the bonus podcasts that will cover how to dress, Tinder game, and much more. Put simply, How to Master the Game will turn you into a stone-cold assassin with the ladies. Available in video and audio format. If you're not the kind of guy who wants to live the bachelor life, or you've had your fill of the player life and are looking for something a little more fulfilling, how to build a quality woman from the ground up is a must. Donovan's five-part, seven-hour audio course will show you step-by-step -step how to find, cultivate, and sustain a solid, healthy relationship. Everything from selecting the right woman, to coaching and correction, to what to do between the sheets. How to build a quality woman from the ground up will guide you through the entire process of building the kind of woman you want and need. The strategies and techniques in this course are exactly what Donovan does in his own relationship to this day. And he is living proof that women can be beneficial to men provided they have the right instruction. And finally, the ultimate weapon all men are looking for in terms of being able to read and understand women, Donovan Sharp's revolutionary one-of-a-kind course that has been called the Cheat Code. Womanese. Womanese is the first and only course of its kind that gives men the raw and honest truth about what women really mean when they communicate verbally. Womanese translates female communication with shocking accuracy and has changed the dating lives and relationships of men the world over. So many men have avoided disaster because of the preciseness and sheer volume of material in this course, which contains over 600 translations. How cool would it be to be able to see through a woman's BS and act accordingly right then and there, rather than getting blindsided when it's too late? What would it be like to have the ability to read a woman like a book based only on what she says? These abilities will be at your disposal with womanese. Women won't be able to lie to you, cheat on you, deceive you, or take advantage of you. The time and money you'll save pays for the course almost immediately. Womanese is available in video, audio, ebook, and paperback format, and can be purchased one volume at a time or all at once. Men in his community often state that the best investment a man can make is in himself. Donovan's extensive educational materials will take your life to the next level. And the only place you can get this life-changing knowledge is tsracademy.com. Link in description.
All right, guys. Testing, testing. Let me know if you guys can hear me in the chat. Getting things uh, set up here. Pretty, pretty good distance away from the mic, so I think I'm all right. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Let me know if you guys can hear me in the chat. Appreciate it. Projecting. She belongs to the streets. She belongs to the streets. She belongs, she belongs to, the, to street. the streets. Uh, how about now? I don't want to be. I don't want to be too too loud. Yeah, I don't want to be. I don't want to be jumping out of my chair. Oh my God. What the French toast? Hang on, guys. My microphone just fell apart. Hold on. Law. Dude, it's Murphy's Law in this mofo. All right, y'all, let's do it. Never belongs to you. It's just your turn. You lost your edge, she lost the traction for you. That's how it works. What'd you think she was gonna do? Tell you she cheated? Men cannot afford to get complacent in relationships. Get your fat ass off the couch, start lifting weights and learn game. You're welcome. And now your man, Donovan Sharp. 
What's up, guys? It's your man, Donovan Sharp, and welcome to the 857th edition of TSR Live, your daily dose of toxic masculinity, misogyny, discrimination, hate speech, and small dick energy. I like that. I think I got all of them correct. It is Wednesday, June 1st of 2022, and a happy belated Memorial Day. It's good to have you guys in today. Very, very, very uh, special thanks goes out to our military servicemen, both currently enlisted or retired. You guys are the reason I'm able to run off at the mouth every day and make a damn good living doing it. Um, I am absolutely, I absolutely positively do not take my freedom for granted, uh, and neither should you. Uh, yes, there are many things wrong with our countries, with our country. Yes, relationships, which is the backbone of any relationship, right, or, or of any civilization are circling the drain. Yes, effinism, womanism is rampant and destruction, uh, and as destructive as it ever has been. Um, <clears throat> but, guys, I'm still proud to be an American, and... If I were to die and come back as someone else, I would hope and pray that I came back as me and in this country. So a sincere debt of gratitude is owed to the people who keep our country safe. And we owe an even greater debt of gratitude to those who've died protecting the freedoms we enjoy as Americans today. Um, this is exactly why I have the American flag tattooed on my forearm, because I am proud to be an American. There's a lot to be desired about America. There is no question about it. But uh, that does not mean that I'm not still proud of my country and where I'm from. So happy Memorial Day, everybody, uh, and a sincere thank you to all of those who keep us safe. As always, we are streaming, we are streaming, streaking live simultaneously to Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, DLive, Rumble, and of course, in crystal clear high resolution 4K to Sharp Stream, which can be downloaded for free on Android or iOS. So however you're watching, wherever you're watching from, thank you for making the Sharp Reality Live a part of your daily routine. I actually, I actually wanted to do the, I wanted to do the moving camera. Uh, I had my camera slider all set up and of course I failed to activate it. So um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sweating that. Um, if you guys notice, as a matter of fact, hang on a second, let me do something here quickly. I'm going to raise this up a little bit. If, if, if you guys notice uh, the camera, the, the view is a lot more clear. If you guys notice, I am using a new camera. Actually, I'm not really using a new camera at all. I am just using my iPhone 13 Pro as my new camera. And as you guys can see, it is, dude, it is in crystal, it is crystal clear. You can actually see the neon banana instead of the, those of you who watch my show, uh, you know, the neon banana is usually pretty diffuse. It's, it's kind of blurry, uh, but here, here you can see you can actually see the banana. So I'm gonna get more. I'm gonna get more iPhones. I'm gonna get more neon, neon signs, and uh, so I'll be getting rid of these. Uh, I'll be getting rid of these thousand dollar cameras uh, that I that I invested in a few years back, and uh, upgrade the show. But uh, I'm looking real good on the air. Um, I love the way I look, and uh, I think I'm definitely gonna keep it. Definitely gonna keep it. Uh, keep it gangster over here. Uh, big thanks goes out to my sharpshooters on the sharp stream side: Dre Raven, Hellfong, Geeky Anomaly, J Blaze, Doctor Pill, and of course the lovely and talented Devin. Big shout out to my sharpshooters on the YouTube side: J Blaze Double Dipping, Geeky Anomaly Double Dipping. It appears. Uh, J Blaze Eleven, I already said. Uh, Cookie Mag is in the house. Good to see you in here. Slam Bright. Dre Raven is double dipping. I don't know if I said his name already. Desmond Montgomery. P Dubs is in the house. Nolan Baptiste. Mark LeBrand, aka Ox Craig. Palladium, I think that's how you pronounce that. Uh, good to see you in here. Sean is in the house. Good to see you in here. Big thanks goes out to Slam Bright with the $5 super chat. Says Don DeMarco for our service members. You know it. Don DeMarco for all of our service members. Uh, those guys are the reason why I'm able to run off at the mouth. They really, really are. They really, really are. Uh, Devin says, the sharpest reality ever. I need to get that. But yeah, it looks great. It looks it looks really, really good. Like, it looks crystal. It looks crystal clear. So I'm very, very pleased. Very, very pleased uh, with that. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> pardon me. Let me quickly uh, do a little housekeeping uh, before uh, we get started here. First off, 
Um, summertime is officially here, so I'm changing up my daily live stream schedule. Uh, obviously, the season is not the only reason I'm changing up my schedule. Those of you who follow me regularly understand that I have had a few, really, I've had a few minor health, a few minor health things, maybe two major health issues over the past year, year and a half or so. Um, the, you know, the spring before last, um, 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 I discovered I had high blood pressure. I was quite literally in stroke territory. I was 225 over 190. Um, <clears throat> and so I consider myself lucky that I was, that I was unable to urinate because had I not gone to the emergency room, uh, out in Phoenix where we were staying, uh, there's a better than average chance that I might not be here right now, or at least, you know, suffering long-term catastrophic effects of a stroke. Then, of course, uh, I had COVID-19 uh, last fall. Uh, that was definitely a scary situation, but thankfully I was able to emerge from that situation relatively unscathed. Then, of course, is my recent weight gain <laughs> due, to, due to stress, overwork, uh, and all that good stuff. You know, listen, putting together the CME, live streaming, doing all the shows I was doing with the girls and the seven or the six and, and all the other projects I have going on that require me to work at least 16 hours a day. Now, 15, 20 years ago, guys, I may have been able to pull this off, but now in my mid forties, it's, it's really beginning to take a toll on my health. And as much as I love doing what I do, um, a lot of you guys have reached, I mean, listen, yeah, you, I mean, I'm not good to anyone if I'm impaired, unhealthy, or God forbid, six feet under, um, <sighs> Um, the death of my, the death of, 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 uh, of Kevin, which is still hard to even think about. Um, I don't think I've really dealt with it, but the death of Kevin Samuels was really the wake up call that I needed, uh, really to not only get my health under control, but to build a strong, healthy body and mind so that I can continue to help you guys become the best versions of yourselves and have fulfilling, healthy relationships with the women you choose to be with. Uh, so all of that said, uh, I'm making several changes in order to facilitate a healthy lifestyle that allows me to continue doing what I do best. Uh, the most important change in my mind is cutting back my work schedule just a little bit to give myself a little bit more time to rest, recover, and take care of myself. So, and I posted this on I posted this on on my uh, on Instagram as well as uh, my YouTube community tab. So this is the this is the summertime live streaming schedule. Uh, so on Mondays, it's going to be Devin and I, we're going to discuss relationship topics and answer voicemails about relationships. And there's the new call in number there. And I'll, uh, give you guys a little bit more, uh, detail on that. Um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, um, that's when I do my dating show breakdowns. Um, I'm no longer doing dating show breakdowns every single day. I'm not doing triple headers every single day. Um, I think breaking down one dating show at a time really allows me to sort of focus in and concentrate. I don't get mixed up between the dating shows at my old age. Um, and I think I speak for everyone when I say the ultimatum is actually starting to get really, really good. Uh, we're learning a lot from that. Uh, Wednesdays, Wednesdays and Fridays, um, I answer relationship voicemails. Um, of course I'll do my main topic. I'll break down a fresh and fit or an old school Kevin Samuels video or do a topic of the day. Uh, but then I will also be answering relationship, uh, voicemails, uh, and I will be answering, I think five voicemails today. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Uh, I've got some real, listen, man, got some tough love for some of you guys out there, uh, that have called in. Um, but, uh, that's what I'm going to be doing on, on Wednesdays and Fridays on Saturdays at three o'clock PM Eastern. I'll be doing uh, red pill movie breakdowns. That is my red pill cinema. Um, of course this past Saturday, I broke down the first, uh, about the first half of hitch. Um, maybe it was the first third maybe. Um, and so I'll be resuming that at 3 PM Eastern. So Mondays, Wednesday, uh, so Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, uh, TSR live will air at five o'clock PM Eastern standard time, Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'll be doing my dating show breakdowns exclusively on sharp stream. And then on Saturday, I will be doing the red pill movie breakdowns, um, at three o'clock PM Eastern. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, five o'clock, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, three o'clock, uh, that's really, that's really what it is. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm on all platforms. Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm sorry, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I'm only on Sharpstream um, and breaking down either dating, uh, dating show breakdowns or, uh, or, or, uh, or movies. Uh, so, uh, so that, that's going to be, that's going to be what the schedule is uh, from here on out. Um, uh, now, listen, as you guys can see, um, I'll be answering, you know, dating and relationship questions when we get 
um, I'll be putting out the new voicemail system. I'm gonna put uh, live call. I'm gonna put live call-ins on the back burner for a little while. Um, but I also understand that there are men and women out there who need their questions answered. So rather than taking live calls on the air, uh, you can simply call the TSR hotline. Let me go ahead and put the number up there. You can call the TSR hotline at 305-304-7822. That is 305-304-7822. Um, and I know that, and I've also noticed that I get a lot more women calling in when I don't do live calls. And we want, you know, like I said, I'm trying to help men, and at this point, I'm trying to help women too. Um, we've I've done plenty. I've done 800 and something episodes of bitches ain't shit. It's time to it's time to talk about uh, time to talk about some real world solutions. So you call this number there. You can ask your dating and relationship questions, or you can ask self improvement questions that either me and or Devin. Uh, will answer live on the air. I think this will help the people out there who can't afford a Sharp Stream or a Patreon membership uh, that gives them access to the Sunday Zoom calls where I do my weekly consultations. So we're going to try this out for the next few months. Uh, we're going to see how this works out. And usually, I'm usually spot on when I make changes like this in terms of their success. Uh, and I have a good feeling that this will end up working out for everyone involved. Um, I think it's going to work for me and it's going to work for you guys as well. So, uh, so again, if you guys have any questions about, you know, relationships, dating, self-improvement, uh, anything of that nature, call 305-304-7822. Be specific as possible. Be as specific as possible. Follow the directions and provide the information I ask when you listen to my message, and I will answer your question on the air. Um, if you call from a restricted number, if you call from a blocked number, your voicemail will be automatically deleted. I won't see it. I won't be able to listen to it. So just keep that in mind in case you're thinking about calling, calling and trolling. Um, and if you do call and troll, then I guess you just call and troll. It is what it is. So, um, uh, so I'm I'm glad to be able to I'm glad to be able to start that. Uh, be able to announce that. Um, some quick breaking news uh, just <clears throat> just came into the the uh, the the TSR news desk. Um, it looks like it looks like uh, not too long ago. Looks like Johnny Depp won his defamation case against Amber Heard. Now, the thing that alarmed me was the amount of the W. They awarded him $10.35 million. Um, now, a lot of people would say, oh my God, he sued her for $50 million. Why did he only get her, get her for $10.35 million? It's not about the money for, for, for Johnny Depp. Okay. It's, it's not about the money. Um, he sued her for 50 million. He sued her for $55.0 million. Um, the reason he sued her for $50 million is because he wanted to make sure she took the, the lawsuit seriously. If he sued her for hundred grand, she would have showed up. She would not have shown up. Um, she would have, uh, she would, it, it just would have been a summary judgment and it, it probably would not have made the news, but, uh, but Johnny Depp and his attorneys, uh, they said, Hey, look, man, we need to sue her for an amount of money that matters. Um, and a lot of people might think, oh, $10 million isn't a lot of, isn't, isn't that much. And she got 2 million in return. So it's really only 8.35 million guys. It's on record. Okay. This is the same, re this is the same reason that my legal action against Anthony, it's not about the money. Okay. The amount of money I'm going to be, the, the amount of money I'm going to be suing him for, I know he doesn't have, I know he doesn't have the money. And when I win this case and I will win my lawsuit, he's not going to be able to pay the money. And because it's not about the money. I don't care about the money. Like, dude, I've got enough money. I'm good. I'm solid, right? No, I want this to be on record. I want this to be on record that that I was correct in my assessment. I want to be. I want for. I want people to know that I was wrong. I was. There were. There were multiple torts committed against me. Well, Johnny Depp. Hey, listen, man. It's Ten million dollars is better than no. It's better than nothing. But now everyone knows he was telling the truth. So uh, it says, the verdict is in, the article starts, and it's a big win for Johnny Depp. After three days of deliberations, the jury determined Amber Heard made defamatory statements against the Pirates of the Caribbean star when she wrote an op-ed about surviving sexual and domestic abuse. Heard, who countersued for defamation, won, won just one of three counterclaims against the actor, each accused the other of abuse and destroying their career. Heard, dressed in all black, was in court when the verdict was announced while Depp was in the UK. She kept her eyes down and appeared stoic as it was read. The disappointment I feel today is beyond words. I'm heartbroken that the mountain of evidence still was not enough to stand up to the, to the disproportionate power, influence, and sway of my ex-husband, Heard tells Yahoo Entertainment in a statement. You know, it's interesting. The reason she's disappointed is because she could not use girl power to win against Johnny Depp. Look, man, there have been many, many men with much more sway and much more power than Johnny Depp 
that have had really bad things happen to them as the result of lies of women. So for her to insinuate that it was his sway and his disproportionate power and influence, Amber Heard's acting like she's a B-movie independent film actress. No. Amber Heard's been in some... Amber Heard is... She is an A-list... bot. Well, probably not anymore. But, be, but before this, she was an A-list box office celebrity. She was an Aquaman. She was in the... I mean, she was in, she's, been in, she's been in big movies with big movie stars. For her to act like poor little old me... Big bad Johnny Depp and his big bad attorneys. <laughs> Bitch, please. I'm even more disappointed, she continues, with what this verdict means for other women. Oh, here we go. It sets back the clock to a time when a woman who spoke up and spoke out could be publicly shamed and humiliated. It sets back the idea that violence against women is to be taken seriously, she continues. I believe Johnny's attorney succeeded in getting the jury to overlook the key issue of freedom of speech and ignore evidence that was so conclusive that we won in the UK. I'm sad I lost this case but I'm sadder that I seem to have lost a right I thought I had as an American to, to speak freely and openly. Yeah. Um, nobody said, nobody sued you for freedom of speech, Amber. You were sued for defamation of character. Yes, you can say whatever you want, but freedom of speech does not mean freedom from consequences, Ms. Heard. And Mr. Johnson is going to find that out here in a few, eh, probably in a few short months. Uh, for six weeks, the jury, comprising of five men and two women, heard testimony from both witnesses, including Johnny Depp and the Aquaman star, who painted completely two completely different pictures of their tumultuous relationship. Although this was a defamation case, the, the issue at the center of it was whether Depp accused, abused her at any point even once during their four years together. It seems the jury doesn't believe he did. Depp sued Hurt for $50 million over a 2018 op-ed she wrote in the Washington Post describing herself as a survivor of abuse. Specifically, there were three parts of the article that the Pirates of the Caribbean star claimed to be defamatory, and he won all of them. Yeah, there we go. Depp was awarded $15 million, $10 million in compensatory damages, and $5 million punitive. However, punitive, damage in, in, punitive damages in Virginia are capped at $350K, so Depp is awarded $10.35 million in total. Heard countersued for $100 million, claiming Depp's attorney, Adam Waldman, while acting on behalf of her ex-husband, made defamatory claims about her. Heard sued over three specific statements Waldman made to the press. She won on the second statement. Heard was awarded $2 million in compensatory damages and received no money for punitive damages. Depp issued the below statement after Wednesday's victory. Six years ago, he starts my life, the life of my children, the lives of those closest to me, and also the lives of the people who for many, many years have supported and believed in me were forever changed, all in the blink of an eye. False, very serious, and criminal allegations were levied at me via the media, which triggered an endless barrage of hateful content, although no charges were ever brought against me. It had traveled around the, worst tw the world twice within a nanosecond, and it had a seismic impact on my life and career. And six years later, the jury gave me my life back. I am truly humbled. My decision to pursue this case, he continues, knowing, knowing very well the height of legal hurdles that I would be facing in the inevitable worldwide spectacle into my life, was only made after considerable thought. From the very beginning, the goal of bringing this case was to reveal the truth, regardless of the outcome. Speaking the truth was something that I owed to my children and to all those who have remained steadfast in their support of me. I feel at peace knowing I have finally accomplished that. I am and have been overwhelmed by the outpouring of support and love and the colossal support and kindness from around the world. I hope that my quest to have the truth be told will have helped others, men or women, who have found themselves in my situation and that those supporting them will never give up. I also hope that the position will now return to innocent until proven guilty, both within courts and in the media. Well, unfor listen, like, I, I hear you on that one, Johnny, but that's not going to happen. Yes, we're innocent. Well, we're innocent until proven guilty in a court of law, and it looks like Gabrielle Union has chopped off her hair. That's a big stock. Anyway. I wish to acknowledge the noble work of the judge, blah, blah. Okay, okay. I wish to acknowledge the noble work of the judge, the jurors, the court staff, and the sheriffs who have sacrificed their own time to get to this point, and to my diligent and unwavering legal team who did an extraordinary job in helping me share the truth. The best is yet to come, and a new chapter has finally begun. Veritas namquam perit. Truth never perishes. I'm assuming that that is in, I'm assuming that's in, uh, that's in Latin. So, um, so yeah, it appears that, um, it appears that um, the the Johnny Depp uh, Amber Heard saga uh, has finally come to an end, and like I said, it's not about the money for Johnny Depp. 
Um, it, it, you can tell in his statement that it, it was never about the money. This was about clearing his name, getting his good name back. And so, uh, so shout out to Johnny Depp, man. I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that he won his defamation case. Um, as far as, listen, as far as Amber Heard is concerned, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's next for her. Um, a lot of people are saying that she probably is going to be canceled. I doubt it. Amber Heard is an attractive actress. Listen, does she deserve to be canceled? I don't know. I'm not calling for my, for anybody's job. But women like Amber Heard, man, um, <laughs> you just have to understand that women like her need to be, you need to tread carefully with women like that. Um, I, I mean, dude, she's borderline personality disorder. She probably has a mental illness. Amber Heard probably had a slew of black flags that Johnny Depp was never aware of simply because he's Johnny Depp. I remember a long time ago on The Six, uh, Myron talked about the fact, he was either The Six or Waits and Dates. Myron spoke very eloquently about the fact that Johnny Depp, who has pounded more ass than any of us will ever pound in our lifetimes, has no game because girls have been throwing, they've been throwing the the, the panties at Johnny since since before, since he was a teenager on 21 Jump Street. So, um, so shout out to Johnny Depp. I'm glad that, uh, I'm glad things worked out for him. Uh, Jay Blaze 11 with the $2 super chat says, take all the rest you need. Don, we need you here. Absolutely. Appreciate that very, very much. Uh, Ben Barrera with the $5 super chat. Appreciate that very much as well. And so to business. <sighs> and away we go. So, so during the CME, during the CME, as you can see, uh, two of my speakers there in the center of your stream, stream, screen, both Troy Francis and MLD, they visited the Fresh and Fit studios. This was Fresh and Fit after hours. Um, I'm actually going to break down two different clips as well as another Fresh and Fit uh, with uh, Janelle Gordon on there because there's a point I want to make. But this was this was an incredible episode in many, many ways. And what I discovered about this particular episode is that misandry, m women who are misandrists, women who hate men, don't all, they're not always, they don't always look like the typical rank and file card carrying feminist. Some of them can be, you know, some of them can be quite attractive. Not all misandrists are, you know, yelling with, with, with blood coming from their teeth. Ah, you know, I bathe in male tears. A lot of times they're very, they appear to be very measured and calm about it. But here's, here's the thing. These kinds of women are very, very hard to spot because of their demeanor. And this person right here, um, I guess her name is Brittany Petraka. She is a quintessential example of this in action. Awestrike says Goose Day, for example. Absolutely. You can, you watch Goose Day for five minutes. You know that she's a militant feminist. She's going to die alone. She's getting, I mean, dude, she's getting flown out to Dubai, getting passed around, all this other kind of stuff. At least that's what her, that's what her Instagram would lead me to believe. Any, anytime you see a girl, anytime you see a young, pretty woman on a boat, you can draw some pretty accurate conclusions. And I think you guys know what I'm talking about there. So before we get started, speaking of Instagram, let's check out, let's check out Miss Petraka's Instagram before we get into this. And the reason I'm going to check out her Instagram is because as far as I'm concerned, you can really tell a lot about a woman by what she puts on social media. Coco, who was on the Adam Sosnick Soscast the other night, said that she was, oh, successful and I have businesses. We took a look at her Instagram and it was nothing but... Stop the cap. She was capping. She didn't have any businesses. She's not successful. She linked up with a successful guy. So we summarily sort of uh, sort of uh, debunked uh, debunked that. So before we take a look at what's going on here with uh, with Miss Petraka, let's take a look at her Instagram. So the first picture is of her ass. Boom, right there. And look at that. She's on a boat. Oh, lo oh, look at that. She's on a boat. What is that? A slip and slide? Is that a is that a What the hell is she on? What the hell is she on? Oh, there. Oh, now, 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 see, there it is. There's another ass picture. Listen, she has a cute ass. It's obvious she has a very pert. She has a very pert ass, but she's on. She she looks like she's on. A, now this that's I guess is a jet ski. That's a yacht. That listen, that's a yacht. She's on a yacht. She's on a boat. Again, she has a very nice ass. She's got a pert ass, right? There she is bending over on this slip and slide. I'm not really. Somebody fill me in on what that is. I don't really know. And then, of course, you see all of the thirsty comments. The bat is so beautiful. Um, let's see. You're so hot. What a babe. 
Uh, where are dude? Where are you, uh, dude? It says right there, Fontaine Le Bleu, Fontaine Bleu, Miami Beach. So there she is uh, on a yacht. And any woman who is on a yacht on Instagram, you can safely assume many things. Uh, this appears to be her profile picture. I guess that's what she likes to do. Now, this is interesting. So, happy birthday to my favorite princess. Whole world knows I love you. Who? I wonder who this girl. Oh. 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 I, oh, I see. Huh. Well, it appears this, uh, this little princess um, has some black in her. And listen, we all know, man. We listen, we all know before before we even have to do this. Let's just go ahead. Let's just go ahead and get this about the way. Brittany Petraka fucks niggas, y'all. Brittany Petraka fucks niggas. Brittany Petraka is the typical rank and file. She's a mud shark. She likes to she she fucks nothing but black dudes. Um, unfortunately for her, unfortunately for her, it is all over for her. Like, dude, not only are white dude, not only are white dudes not ever going to go near her. She's she says on the Fresh and Fit podcast that oh, I'm 25. I'm I want to live for myself. We'll get into that later. We'll get into that later. Um, here she is again. Of course, this is Slutoween. What is she dressed as? A slutty devil. Let's see. Here's there's her on another yacht. There's her in. That, obviously, that house is not hers. It says my energy speaks for me. This is honestly, she's probably at the house of some dude, some high value dude. She's smashing, right? Again, it, it's it's amazing that girls give themselves away as hoes with these kinds of pictures, right? They give themselves away as hoes with 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 these kinds of pictures when they're on balconies in Miami and they're in bikinis and on yachts. Like you're a hoe, sweetie. And when you're hanging out, is she Hispanic or is she black? I don't know. Who it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. But girls need to understand that when they put certain things on Instagram, you gotta, un you have to know and understand that people are going to make assumptions about you. Or actually, you know what? Let me let me let me rephrase that. When you when you have yourself photographed on a yacht, everyone knows you're a hoe. That's what this comes down to. You can say, oh well, you can make whatever assumptions. Yes, because girls on yachts are always hoes, always. One thing that I've noticed about about Brittany Petraka that I think I'll point out here before we get started is she's attractive, which means she's fuckable, but she's not very she's not as attractive as she she's not of she's not as attractive as she seems. Brittany Brittany Petraka she's the type of girl she looks good enough to get your attention, but the only reason why people would characterize her as hot is because she's always wearing skin tight clothes or bikinis. Right, she's the kind of girl who only looks good in slutty clothes. See, look, right here, you see her. Oh wow, she looks good. She's not fat, and she's, you know, but her face. Yeah, listen, man, she's got a decent face. I wouldn't kick her out of bed. We'd all smash, but she's not. She's not that hot. Like for whatever reason, she. And listen, I mean, hey, I'm all for confidence. You know what I'm saying? I'm all for being confident. And you know, hey, like if if that's you, do you? But. She's not as she, she 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 doesn't look as good as she thinks she does. Um, she makes it very easy for athletes and rappers to smash her. So she, like most women who get passed around by the blue check mafia, she thinks she looks better than she does. And of course, any white girl with braids in her hair on any level, yeah, yeah. Listen, dude, she's got all the mud shark tells. Uh, she's got all the San Francisco to New York tells. There she is in a bikini and hoop earrings. Mm-hmm. Yep, hoop earrings. Yeah, she's a yacht thought. Yeah, uh, I'll strike with the $2 super chat uh, says uh, says yacht thought. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean don't, don't, listen, I'm not saying she's ugly. She's she's obviously attractive, but she, she, I mean, dude, she ain't that good looking, you know? And you know me, guys. I'm always... You know, a lot of us, you know, oh, she's average at best, and I, she, no, no, Brittany Petraka is not ugly. Like, let 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 let's not get that straight. She's got a nice pert ass, but I mean, she's, I mean, look, listen, a lot of some guys like flat-chested women. If that's your thing, that's cool. I'm not trying to make make a backward backhand compliment. I like my women with actual tits and you know and curves. But and listen, I mean, I'd smash just because just because she's not my ideal type does not mean I wouldn't that, that doesn't mean I wouldn't I wouldn't smoke her with my sausage. But by the same token, man, she just she's the kind of woman who is only attractive 
if she's wearing skin tight clothes and or showing a lot of skin. That's really what this comes down to. So, so Brittany appears to be the typical, uh, the the, uh, the typical the typical uh, yacht thought. So, um, <clears throat> all right. So uh, let's. Um, let me go to let me go to the breakdown screen, and I'm told that I had another oh black lemur, uh, black lemur 2009, with the five hundred dollar super chat. Says, is it just me or are all misandrists three o fours? Yeah, it's not just you, black lemur. It's not just you. All misandrists are hoes, right? All misandrists are hoes. Women who hate men are always hoes always because if there was a woman who was who was born obese and never had a and never got any sausage from any dude she can't hate what she doesn't know right familiarity breeds contempt now a lot of people would say that about us well you hate women because you've slept with a lot of women no not really i'm jaded because i've slept with a lot of women but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean i hate women i hate fuck women sometimes and they kind of like that but um yeah Listen, any woman who is a any woman who is a misandrist is almost always a thought. Almost always a thought. And this is Miss Miss Petraka is no different. So let's go ahead and uh, chime in. We're going to break down two clips with Miss Petraka. And uh, if we have time, I'll uh, break down another fresh and fit. I'll break down another uh, fresh and fit clip. And yes, I do know that she is on. And yes, I do know that she is on OnlyFans. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know she has an OnlyFans. But you know what? what what's very interesting about Britney is the is the 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 she's very measured in her responses, her tonality and her vocal cadence is measured, but her thinking is still very very female and very irrational. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. finesse really well. BBC. So she's saying six foot tall. She, if she ever marries those types of guys, she knows it's going to end badly. It's pretty much a guy that has game. I don't. Oops. Just saying. Yeah, well, because half the game. Well, game is like, a good thing. Well, like, right now. That's fine. That. Yeah. It's, All right. it's, no. no one's seeing me have sex with another man. No, we go. but, you so are but fully it is naked. sexual. Um, not on my page, no. But I mean, <sighs> when they sign up, are you fully no. naked? Partially naked? It's only bikini? Yeah. Top up? Even yeah. bikini still sexual. No, no, no. I, it's, uh, it's for sure sexual. Okay, do you see what she just did there? What you guys will see, what you guys will quickly see is what a lot of women like her do when they know they're cornered is they never give you any affirmations ever, ever. Are you on OnlyFans? She's she's clearly on OnlyFans, right? So you'll ask her, are you on OnlyFans? <clears throat> I don't know, I guess. I mean, I don't really do it that much. I only have like five videos on OnlyFans. No, she can't answer yes or no. She cannot answer questions she know makes her look bad or has the wrong mental mindset. You will quickly find out. You will quickly find this out as this little podcast goes on. She does not want to give an inch. She's being very disingenuous. She's having this conversation in bad faith. Let's continue. Yeah. I'm just saying um, they're not going to be traumatized with videos they're never going to unsee. But that was traumatized my point. by the photos of stream. No, that was the point. You're on OnlyFans. And if you're on OnlyFans, she belongs to the streets. Mm -hmm. are looking at it. There are a lot of guys that genuinely they are confident enough to not care about what other people. See that? See? Let's go back. Let's let's rewind. Listen to what John says. With videos they're never gonna unsee. But that I'll was be my point. by the photos if strangers are looking mm -hmm. at it. There are a lot of guys that genuinely they are confident enough to not care about. See that? So John is like, dude, you got strangers looking at your naked body or your half naked body. She's like, there are a lot of men who are confident enough. There's always an answer. There's always an answer. She has an answer for everything, right? She has an answer for everything. God, dude, like, what the hell's up with your OnlyFans? Well, there are guys that are not confident. She does this. She gets worse as this goes on. A lot of Why do you think. keep saying and that about the confidence? Yeah, I don't think it's confidence. Do you think it's insecurity? Um, <clears throat> that they don't care. Yeah, because you're, you're automatically insinuating your... guys who are no, not no, no. okay with are not I just confident. feel like that's a confidence thing. That's me personally making an assessment. I feel like that Why? they're more confident. Just because when you say, when I walk into a room and everyone thinks this about me, well, why do you care what everyone thinks about you? Have you been because, it makes because girls do. You before? look bad. No, oh, dude. Wow. Dude, the assassin. Dude, there's an assassin right next to her. 
Did you guys catch this? Listen. Thinks this about me. Well, why do you care what everyone thinks about you? Have you been because it makes you look before? bad. Because it makes you look bad. I don't know who this, uh, listen, I don't know if this girl's like Yugoslavian or something, but she's just straight up told you because it makes you look bad. Because it makes you look bad. This is the problem with OnlyFans, man, especially when you're in Miami. Brittany walks into a room or a club or a bar, whatever the case may be. Dude, she's I'm subscribed to my OnlyFans. That makes you look bad, dude. That makes you look really, really bad. And the chick next to her, like low key, like yeah, uh, Sean on the YouTube side says Chuck, Chucky was low key roasting her. Yeah, it does make you look bad. And she knows it makes her look bad. Otherwise, she wouldn't feel the need to sit here and legitimize it. No, no. Have you been- she says, because it makes you look bad, then she says, no, no. Yes, it does. It but proposed to you before? No. Yeah, that's why. That's going to be a problem. You should. Do you have uh, good men in your family? Uh-oh. Here we go. Like they're going to be honest with you. Like, if, you know, you were going headed down a path. Well, bad one, path. I don't want. Oops. Sorry about that. be proposed to. I've never asked a guy. Here we go. Listen to this. So, Allie asks her a direct question. Are there men that you trust in your family who are giving you advice? Watch what like she says. Like if, you know, you were going headed down a path. Well, path one, path. I don't want to be proposed to. I've never asked a guy no, about no, no, that. But, but that was- See that? See that? I don't want to be proposed. Have you ever been proposed to? Somebody asked, have you ever been proposed to? I don't want to be proposed to. That's not like, do you want to be married? I don't want to be pro- proposed to. Stop the cap. She's capping. Of course she wants to be proposed to. The only reason why. See, she's she's being... She's being she's being low key uh, adversarial, and she's being she's she, she's being disingenuous. Anytime anybody quizzes her on something that requires a direct answer, she's either the exception to the rule or she didn't want it anyway. She's just the exception. Well, I don't want a man to propose to me. Of course you do. Every woman does. But that wasn't the question. Like, you don't do want to get have... married? No, no, no. I'm not at 25. Absolutely not. And Why? I, I truly You're at mean your that. highest value. And there you have it. There you have it. There you have it. Don't you want to be married? Not at 25, I don't. <laughs> this woman is, this woman is not as, attra- she, I, I, she's not as attractive as she thinks she is, number one. Number two, she's, and this is no, this is no slight on her, but the only reason why she's skinny is because she's young. She's skinny, and she, the only reason why she's skinny is because she's young and she has decent genetics. She doesn't, she, she doesn't work out. She's just skinny. There's no muscle tone, and I don't expect her to have a six pack. Right? Like, she's got a sexy body, but it's only because she's 25. But here she is. Here she is. At 25 years old, she's like, oh, no, no, way, 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 way. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. I do not want to be married. Not now. So you want to get passed around until the men who pass you around don't want you anymore. Are you right yeah, now? I mean, Tom I don't. I want to, I want to like, live for myself right now. And That's I mean fine. That. There you go. Translation, I want to sleep around. When women say, I want to live for myself right now, I want to sleep around indiscriminately. And the thing is this, man, if that's what she wants to do, that's fine. That doesn't make her a bad person. That doesn't make her, that doesn't make her terrible. That doesn't mean there's a flaw in her character, but she needs to understand. And I don't think she understands that she needs to understand that if she lives for herself now, she'll be living by herself later. See, the reason why she's okay with living for herself and not in a hurry or press to get married or in a relationship is because guys still want to plow her. That's the only reason why she's got guy. Well, I'm not, I'm not sweated. I'm not pressed, blah, 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 blah. Of course you're not pressed because guys still want to sleep with you. And in your mind, you're thinking that guys are going to want to sleep with you for the rest of your life. That's not the case. You can end up alone if you look for yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, with cats and dogs. Like uh, we're just saying that you're at your <laughs> men <laughs> prioritize women who are young and yeah. beautiful. Do you ever want children? So you're yes. saying, I, you're basically saying, I'm going to wait until I'm older and hope for a better thing to come along. I just don't want to be married right now. I no, really don't. See, he just got her. You need to run and get married, but I'm just saying that you're... I just don't want to be married right now. She doesn't want to be married right now. She wants to reserve the... Listen, it's okay. She wants to reserve the right to sleep around. She's just keeping it real. I just don't want to be married right now. Now, the reason why she doesn't want to be married, that's a whole other, that's a whole other conversation. But if we're just taking her at her word, if she just doesn't want to be married, or, married right now, that's fine. Just understand that... She belongs to the streets. Value is at its pretty much peak right now as far as a sexual marketplace is standard. Um, because we like young girls. We don't want no grandmas pulling us around. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so John just gave her facts. Right now, she's 25 years old. She is at peak sexual market value. She's probably she, she's, she's, she's at her peak. Let's just assume she's at her peak. Okay, she's not getting any younger. And all everybody knows that the older the older women get, especially at this age... 
the lower her sexual market value. The lower her sexual market value, the less likely she is to lock down the men that she actually wants. So that was a direct question. Let's see her answer. Um, I, I want to know, honestly, how I feel. I feel like the people March. that are married now are going to be divorced in five to seven years. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So, That's cute. See, now she's giving excuses. See, the reason she wants to be single is because she wants to be a hoe. But she doesn't want to say that. She can't say that because it, well, makes her look like a hoe. So finally, she just said, listen, I just don't want to be married right now. John says, okay, your value is as high as it's ever going to be. It's as high as it's ever going to be. She comes back with, well, I feel like merch that if you get married now, we're going to be divorced in five to 10 years. You think that your chances of getting a divorce go up when you get married at an older age or down? <laughs> So she's basing her, per, and, and she likes to say, well, this is just me personally. This is just how I feel. Yet she's basing, she she is telling us that she's basing her, her, her marriage decision on other people's relationships. So because people she apparently knows get divorced in five, 10 years, that be, people that get divorced in, in five, 10 years, that's enough for her just to say, no, I don't want to get married because I see people getting divorced. That's cap. The reason she doesn't want to get married is because she's uh, she wants to be a hoe. And the, it, there's two reasons why she thinks she doesn't want to get married. Number one, she wants to be a hoe, number one. Number two, she thinks that after she gets done being a hoe, she thinks that the same men who are passing her around are going to want to wife her up. That's just not going to happen. Well, I don't want that. And if people, I see, to... There we go. I don't want oh, people in general. See, here well, we go. Well, I can't make assessments about people I don't know. So the people you know. Uh, Ooh. The people I observe. So I don't maybe know, know them all personally, but the, the things I observe, I feel like in less than 10 years, yes, they... And you're just observing them, them will be when, they're, when you're hanging out with them or people in the park or who are these people you're observing? Um, Good question. I guess probably people I've interacted with in some way, maybe whether it was a coworker and I heard a story or, you she know, has an answer a for everything. best friend and I know things, but like, I don't want what people are looking for right do now. So because, there it is. Exception to the rule. I don't want what people are looking for. Yes, you do. You're not an exception to the rule. She wants a man. She wants a man. Clearly she wants a man, but she also wants to be a hoe. But she knows she can't have a man and be a hoe, so she's gonna so she's just gonna say, "Well, that's not what I want." No, you want a man, sweetheart, and it's not. Listen, you guys know I am anti-marriage. I am pro-relationship, anti-marriage. Men should not get married in this hemisphere, in this day and age. No way, bad idea, bad idea, right? So I think marriage is the wrong word. Lock down a man. That's probably that's probably what we should be going with. But for her to sit here and say in 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 no uncertain terms, I don't want to lock down a man, that's cap. The only reason why she's saying that is because she wants to be a hoe, but she can't tell us she wants to be a hoe. Hold on, because you yeah. assume other people's relationships are going to fail, therefore you're not going to get into uh, a relationship now oh, because you think it's going to fail? Oops. Uh-oh. Um, uh -huh. I think that <laughs> yeah. if I got it. Did you, hear, did you hear her laugh? Did you hear her laugh? Uh, yeah, checkmate. You got me. Into a relationship with the kind of guys that I like now, yes, that it would fail. That's okay, here we go. There it is. If I get into a relationship with the kind of guys I like now, then yes, it would fail. Well, then how about getting into relationships with the kinds of guys that won't do those things? Oh, there's just one problem. Those aren't the men they want. This is the problem with womanism, guys. This is the problem with womanism, man. Women are all chasing the same guys. It's not the kind of guy. She, you see, what, what, what she's characterizing these guys at is morally bankrupt. No. No, 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 no. Men, we're, it, it, sex is amoral. It's not, sex is without morals. It's not immoral. It's not moral. It is amoral. Girls want to attach morality to it when a girl, when a girl has to share a sausage. Or when she finds out that her professional athlete boyfriend or friend with benefit is smashing with is smashing other girls. All of, all of a sudden, he's a bad person. Get out of here with that. That's a mm. bad mental model. NFL players. On at least you know. Most women well, don't. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, that's a really bad way to look. You're, you're, you're basically like blackpilled about your relationship. Like, yep. it's yeah. going to fail no matter what. Yep. That's not really what I said. I'm, it I'm, is, though. That's literally what she said. Did we not just hear her say, I feel like if I get married... It's going to be over in five years. John says, that's what you, well, that's not what I really, that's not what I said. That That's not really what I said. Do you see how she put in the really, well, that's not really what I said. That's like asking a girl. So have you been sleeping around? Not really. 
that means she has. So when she says that's not really what I said, she can move the goalpost. Listen, man, m girls like this run circles around guys mentally, most guys mentally, because it's just it, you can never you can never nail her down on one thing. You can never get her to say you can never to get you can never get her to declare something unequivocally. Is your name Brittany? Well, it's actually my middle name and Petraka is not really my last name. It's really pronounced. You, you can't get a straight answer out of her. And when and when she knows that the question that you ask her, if she knows the truth makes her look bad. She'll 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 diffuse the truth somehow. So no, that's not really what I said. No, that's what you said. Like, it's the certain type of guys I guess I interact with now. Um, I feel that I'm interact with. You hear that? It's the certain kinds of guys who are fucking you, Brittany. Growing out of it because of things I've been through. What do you say, like bad boys okay. and so celebrities? Um, I guess like the guys <laughs> with like so much game and okay, like they they're options. so smooth. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, Brittany, the guys with so much game who are so smooth. Those are that's the blue check mafia, sweetie. That's the blue check mafia, man. Those dudes sing lullaby. They tell you, well, I want a strong and independent woman. Dude, they're only telling you that because they want to smash. That's it. They don't want or need a strong and independent woman. They just tell you that so they can butt fuck you and, pa and, and, and pass you to the next dude on a yacht. Come on. Oh, yeah. finesse really well. BBC. So she's oh, finesse really well. Oh, law number 26 of the 49 laws of Sharp. Law number 40, 26 of the 49 laws of Sharp. Women cannot stand it when they do not have a decided advantage on the dating market. I can promise you that for every guy that has screwed over Britney, I promise you Britney has done the same thing to 25 guys per guy. How many times has Britney been screwed over? Maybe, what, 10, 11 times? You don't think she's lied to an unsuspecting dude? You don't think she's finessed a man? You don't think she's been out on a date with a man she has no sexual interest in, unbeknownst to the man for the specific purpose of getting a free meal, but now men ain't shit because they somehow got over on you. Guys, never, ever, ever feel sorry for a woman who says she got screwed over by a man. Because for every for, for every man that screws over a woman, that woman has screwed over 35 guys. Saying, and they're mad about it. That's why Britney is now a misandrist. So if she ever marries those types of guys, she knows it's going to end badly. It's there it is. Much. A guy that has game, I don't think it'll end badly, actually. I don't give a shit what Tori has to say. He is the guy. He is the guy. Yeah. He's the guy. He's the day game. I don't want the, that the anymore. Most approaches I don't want that. Look at that. I don't want that anymore. But look at the smile on her face. You don't want that anymore? No. You don't need that anymore. But you want it. You see, you don't need to fuck with professional athletes and rappers anymore. You don't need to, but you want to. Look at her face. Look at her face. It's the first time she smiled the whole time. Watch. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, when she says, you know, I don't want that anymore, all of a sudden now, watch. He's the guy. Just watch. Just watch. Just watch her smile. Yeah. He's yeah. the guy. He's the day I don't want the, that the anymore. Day. Most, I don't want that anymore. Didn't smile the whole time until now. Ain't that something? Doesn't need it anymore, but she damn sure wants it. The approach is you ever watch your own. What about when you're sixty? Like you should, you Wait, shouldn't what? like. So, what Hold about on. when you're sixty? Do you want to be alone, or do you want to have a man and some children around you? Direct question. You hear this? Direct question. She says, "What about when you're older? Do you want to have a man and some children around you?" Do you feel that if I'm not married at twenty-five, I won't be married at sixty? No, no, yeah. she, Yes. <laughs> I do. So she answered a question with a question that's more diverting. So if you feel like I'm not married with by 60, by 25, I'm not going to be married by 60. That's a question asked in bad faith. That's ridiculous. No one, no man is going to marry you at 60. Let, let's let, let, let's not be disingenuous. Uh, Black Lemur says, wait, was there a fallout with Tori? No, there was not a fallout with Tori. Um, I'm just not, Tori is not going to be, um, she's, I'm, and listen, I wish Tori the best of luck. Um, I have nothing. Uh, I have nothing bad to say about her, uh, at least not too much. But um, but I don't want I don't want Tori in or around anything that I have to do with. Period. I don't want her at my seat. I don't want her around my events. I don't want her on my channel. I wish her the best of luck. But but I have seen and heard things that are concerning to me that lead me to believe that she is just not good for my brand. So. I don't dislike Tori. I just don't want her around anything that I have that that, that I have going on. That's it. No, just no, asking no. you a question in general. Your life at sixty. Do you want a man there? 
Um, Listen but yes, to that. Uh, honestly, I will say like things that go. I've been through recently, like my mind wants to say no to that. But realistically, like that would be a boring life. But right now, I'm very content being by myself because she couldn't say yes. Do you want a man when you're old? She couldn't say yes. Well, my mind wants to say no. She can never ever say yes or no. And the reason why she can't or won't answer yes or no, guys, is because she knows that her she knows that her thinking is flawed. She knows it makes her look bad. That's why. Anytime, dude, anytime these girls, and you guys are, if you guys notice, if you guys notice, Brittany is, she, she is soulless. She's soulless. She has the thousand cock stare. She's had the innocence and naivety completely fucked out of her. That's why she acts like this. She has a very, listen, her, her, her voice is monotone. Her voice is, I don't want to say her voice is not feminine because listen, she can't, she can't help what her voice sounds like, but it's very monotone. She sounds boring. And you know, look. It's like I say about good-looking girls all the time, man. Good-looking girls have no personality because they've never really had to develop it, right? Like, Brittany is, she's a mildly attractive woman, and any mildly attractive, if you're a mildly attractive woman who's not fat and you're wearing nothing most of the time, yeah, guys are going to think you're hot. And if guys think you're hot, you don't really have to develop yourself outside of your looks. And so that's why she's, <laughs> that's why she, I mean, dude, she has the personality of a window pane. Well, I, uh, you know, I don't know if I want to be blah, 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 blah. And, you know, I've been ruined and, like, I don't really want to have a man or it's just, oh, yeah, yeah. Because no one can affect my, you know, my average everyday. Yeah, of course. You know, my mood. Yeah. No one can affect my mood if I'm by myself. So I can't really. Uh, listen, I agree with that. I agree with that now. She has, she, like, at this point, she has the thousand, she has the thousand cocks there. She has the thousand, dude, she, has, her voice is the thousand cocks there. Answer that, I guess, right now. But, like, realistically, who wants to be alone at 60, I guess? Yeah. There it is. Realistically, who wants to be alone at 60? The answer was yes. All she had to say was yes. But she couldn't, she didn't want to acknowledge that Ali is correct. So she just said, well, realistically, who wants to be alone at 60? Well, nobody. Why couldn't you just say yes? Because she doesn't want to acknowledge that Allie was right in her questioning. That's what kind of that's what kind of conversation this is. Yeah. I really, really want kids, mm -hmm. but like sometimes I see myself like having kids and not a man. How does what? L hold on, let me run that back. Mm -hmm. But like sometimes I see myself like having kids and not a man. How does one more time. But, like, sometimes I see myself, like, having kids and not a man. See, this is the problem with modern women. This is the problem with modern women. And this is the same thing. This, she, has the same, she has the same mindset as Coco. Coco, Ali asked her, would you change for a man? No, I'm not. I change for my children, but not a man. Right? This woman literally just sat here and said, I see myself with a kid and not a a man. What are we doing? What are we doing? Like, you're sitting here telling us that you see yourself being a single mother? We all, look, guys, listen, man. Look, 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 look. There is more than enough evidence out here. There is more than enough evidence out here that tells us unequivocally that people, men and women who come from single mother households are damaged. They're damaged. Girls who are raised by single mothers end up as strippers. Boys who are raised by single mothers end up as criminals or switch hitters. It's not good. Obviously, a two-parent household is what's best, but people raised by single mothers are abject dumpster fires. Yet here she is telling us, despite all of the evidence that we've seen, that I see myself with a kid and not a man. What the fuck? Uh, Intel Wild with the two dollar super chat says, "Oops, sorry." She belongs to the streets. Rest in peace, Kevin Samuels. Appreciate that very, very much. Intel Wild with another five dollar super chat says, "In six years, she'll be saying, where did all the good guys go?'" Yep, exactly. Um, Intel Wild with another five dollar super chat says, "Cause deep down, she knows she will be alone at 50. No, nope. I disagree. Intel Wild, she will be alone at fifty, but she doesn't know it. That's why she has this attitude." If she looked, and this is the thing, if she really, if she really believed, if she knew the truth about, about the direction that her current path is taking her, she wouldn't be taking this path. If she were to look into a crystal ball and it showed her that based on her life choices right now, where she would be at 50, where she'll be at 30, 35, she wouldn't have this attitude. 
But the only reason why she's so blase, blase, and laissez-faire about, oh, you know, I'll have a child and I'm a man and I'm not pressed to be married is because she thinks that men are, she thinks that the men who are trying to get at her now are going to be trying to get at her later. For whatever reason she has in her mind, well, I can't change these men now, but damn it, I'll wear them down. And at some point when I'm, when, when I'm 35, 36 and I'm a boss bitch, that's when, the, that's when I'll wear them down. So no, she doesn't, she doesn't, deep down, she really doesn't know. She doesn't really know. I think she, she really and truly believes that men are going to be trying to get at her like they have since she's probably 15, 16 years old. I'm trying to tell you. Uh, ben Barrera with the $5 Super Chat says she lost, she, she lost her ability to pair bond about 500 bodies ago. God damn. That's a lot of bodies. That's a lot of bodies, man, but you're probably How does right. OnlyFans fit into your plan to have children? Uh-oh. Um, OnlyFans has not affected my life in any way. No, no, that's not what he asked. Be, do you see how she tries to beat him to the punch? How sure. does it fit into oh, your plan um, to have children? You mean like them? Is it financially? Is it confidence? Is it growing your IG? What is it? Um, honestly, it's just kind of for fun. Like it, it really oh, did not end we... up being what everyone thinks it is. Like if you... Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, I just did it for fun. So basically she's the bitch who's on Tinder because her friend made an account for her. Stop the cap. You don't have one or you've never experienced it. Like you can't really make assessments on it, to be honest. And like, sure we can. <laughs> of course we can. I've never had an OnlyFans, but I can say with mathematical certainty that women who have OnlyFans are hoes. I can say with mathematical certainty that women on OnlyFans. She belongs to the streets. This is such this is such a flawed argument. You can't tell you can't make an assessment on OnlyFans because you've never had OnlyFans. That's that's ridiculous. Again, this again, she's having this conversation in bad faith. She's not being honest. All she's all she's doing is diverting and and she's not you can't really nail her down on anything. What John is saying is that OnlyFans is going to fuck up your kids. But no, nope, it's just for fun and blah, blah, blah. I don't care why you did OnlyFans. If your kid, if you decide to have kids without a man and one of your kid's friends shows a naked picture of you, how's that going to make you feel? Like, never had any hate. And not to my face, but I don't care what people say about me behind my back. I'm Stop the cow. Yes, you do. Of course you do. Any woman, look... Law number 24, the 49 laws of sharp. The more a woman tries to convince you of something, the more likely the opposite is true. The women who sing from the highest mountaintop, I don't care what the people think about me. These are the women who care the most. They absolutely care the most. And if you notice, if you notice on her, on her uh, Instagram, on her Instagram page, there's no sign of a man. It's just yachts and ass. She's a yacht thought. It's just yacht and ass. That's it. She's a yacht thought. This is a guy who probably, this is the guy who probably alpha widowed her. So that's the first man that I've seen, but that's the guy who probably alpha widowed her. Right. And again, the only reason why she, the only reason why she's not fat is because she's young. That's it. That's it. It's clear that it's clear that she doesn't work out. And listen, she's listen. I mean, this is the advantage that women have. Women can be skinny fat. Women can be skinny fat. Men cannot be. Women are women. Women who are skinny fat, they can be unattractive, but I don't know. Listen, look, man, she's got she, she looks all right. She looks all right, but she's not as hot as she thinks she is, man. She's really not. And she's already got bags under her eyes. Oof. Hey, yay, hey, hey. let's continue. I'm not that kind of person. Like no one's opinion affects me at all. Right. It's not about the opinion. I'm asking you. Stop the cap. What is the strategic I, I mean, I don't. My OnlyFans has nothing to do with like it's having kids. Plan. Well, if I you have, have kids and they see your OnlyFans, that's gonna be a problem. <laughs> Yo, the Russian girl straight bodies the bitch. Um, oh, she's probably taking it down by then. Right. right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, Troy, come on, Troy. He says, "Now, did you hear what Troy just said? Hold up, hold up. I think Troy's running the game here. Fans, that's gonna be a problem. Yes, it is." Well, she's probably um, taking it down by then. Right. right. I mean, yes, she'll take it down, Troy. But the internet is forever. I think Troy's trying to smash. I think, I think Troy's trying to smash Brit. <laughs> the Brit's trying to smash Brit. I ain't mad at you, Troy. It's, never it's forget, always never yeah, it's always so there. that's fine. If someone sends my, I mean, if like I have kids and like when they're Here old enough go. to understand, I would think that'd be like. 10, 15 years from now, when they're old enough to be like, look at that and see if someone shows my kids something like oh from my. 10 years mm -hmm. ago, that's, I'm saying I'll handle that when that comes. But How'd that's you feel 
oh my god, this is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. If my kid sees a naked picture of myself, I'll handle that when it comes. That Dude, that's a terrible answer. How are you going to handle that when it comes? That's crazy. If your kids, if your kids' friends show you a naked picture of you, that's a problem, Brittany. That's a problem. I feel if really you saw nudes weird. of your mom. Uh, oh. Um, personally, I have a good relationship with my mom. It oh, Jesus. Really <laughs> me. This is unbelievable. Do you hear? And th this is why they're laughing. This is why they're laughing. But, um, this is why they're laughing. We'll get naked at Christmas. See, 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 this is why they're laughing. This is why they're laughing. No matter what, dude, no matter what they ask her, there's always an answer. How does OnlyFans fit into your plans with, well, OnlyFans has never affected my life. Okay. What would you say? What would you say if you're if if what would you say if you saw news of your mom? I have a very good relationship with my mom. She does not, dude. She does not want to give an inch. See what she's displaying right now, guys. These are very masculine characteristics and personalities. Okay, these are very masculine personalities. This is not a court of law. This is the court of public opinion. And just because you can come up with what you feel is a good argument, doesn't doesn't mean the argument flies. Listen, man, there, listen, just because you have a good relationship with your mother doesn't mean that you would handle seeing nudes of your mother. That's the sickest thing I've ever heard in my life. What is she talking about? Oh, wait, I disappeared. There we go. You have a good relationship with your mother? What does having a good relationship with your mother have to do with seeing nudes of your mother? See, again, whatever answer... Whatever answer she can give to not satisfy the objective of the question, that's the answer she's going to pick. The answer is, listen, if I saw nudes of my mother, I'd be pretty fucking freaked out. What does she say? Well, I have a good relationship with my mother. Didn't answer the question. You can have the, you can have the world's greatest relationship with your mother. If you see nudes of your mom, that's going to change your life. Uh, Karen C. with the $5 Super Chat says, Donovan, you are so right, coming from a woman who hit the wall a long time ago. Okay, appreciate that, Karen. Uh, Demion602 uh, with the five British pounds says, The customer is always right. Said no OnlyFans, OnlyFans model ever. <laughs> Very good. Awestrike, $5 says, In 10 years, middle schoolers will be swapping mom nudes like trading cards. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Holy so you mentioned children, so though. You mentioned yeah. children. Yeah. You They're said you wanted children, cool. but you could see yourself raising them by yourself. Why would you do that? Um, to be completely uh, honest uh, with you, uh, 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 I'm pretty traumatized yes. and I feel that men have made my life harder than it ever needed to be. So what's that got to do with you wanting to be a single mother? See, now she's going to see now she's using sign language, shame, insults, guilt, and the need to be right. Right. So Thor just called her out. Why would you want to raise a kid by yourself? Well, because men have traumatized me. So every man has traumatized you. This is why you know this girl has been passed around. She has she has such a nonchalant, she has such a nonchalant laissez-faire attitude about the whole thing. This is why you know she's been ran through. This is why you know she's been ran through. Devin, put it on the poll. Put it on the poll. Put it on the poll, Devin. What's Britney's body count? What's Britney's body count? Is it under 500 or is it over 500? Is Britney's body count over 500 or is it under 500? And I'll be honest with you. I'm taking the over because any woman who can, sp I've been traumatized and da -da, like she's not, she, 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 it's almost like she has P, she almost says, she, she, it's almost like she has PTSD, post-traumatic stress dick disorder. Like that's what it is, man. Like, she's like, I've been traumatized. Look at her face. Does she look like someone who's been traumatized? No. She's talking about it like she's talking about eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Like, eh, it's just something that happened in my life. Yeah, I've been traumatized. Really? She must be really traumatized for her to be able to talk about it like this. And you guys can make assessments on my OnlyFans about who I am as a person. But yes, we will, Brittany. We will. Because like I said earlier, if you're on OnlyFans, you're a hoe. If you're an OnlyFans, you're a host, sweetie. Look, again, we can make assessments on your OnlyFans. Guess what? We can make assessments on your OnlyFans and your Instagram. You're a yacht thought. Look at you're showing your ass and oh, this and that and the other. She's the typical vapid Western woman who wants to put off marriage because she thinks she's going to be hot forever. She's going to have that rude awakening at some point. She's going to have that rude awakening at some point. 
Oh, wait a minute. There we go. But genuinely, like, I have a lot to offer, and I'm a great person. Really? What do you have to offer? Seriously, I have a lot to offer. What do you have to offer other than a pert ass? Which in a few short years is probably going to be sagging at some point. Like bitches are always saying, well, I have a lot to offer. What exactly do you have to offer? And, and anyone who has lost me has felt it. And I don't foresee a man that way. Like no man I've ever lost added value to my life. And I mean that. So, oh, see, there it is. No man that I've ever been with. Let, let, let's just watch this. Man that way. Like, no man I've ever lost added value to my life. And I mean that. No man that I've ever lost. Let's let's listen to that again. Be a man that way. Like, no man I've ever lost added value to my life. And I mean that. So, yeah, see, there's the hate in her. So, <laughs> this is funny. So, basically, she's dating bum niggas, right? So, the man that you have lost have never added value to your life. Brittany, I don't know if you've realized this. But this is an indictment on you, not them, you. So no man that you've ever lost has added value to your life. Then why are you going after men that do not add value to your life? Gentlemen, gentlemen, choose a woman who adds value to your life. Ladies, choose a man that, had, that adds value to your life. And this is the thing. Women always choose men who add value to their lives. They always do. Men, they don't. All a woman has to be is there and willing to have sex and most men are ready to most women are, are, are ready to take her off the market right both men and women need to seek men and women who add value to their life Brittany you picked those men you picked those men Brittany she says and I mean that she thinks that so, so she thinks at this point that she's yeah you didn't add value to my life they felt it really what did they feel what did they lose when they lost you Brittany an, an A cup and a pert ass and a woman who shows absolutely no emotion who sound, who sounds like she who sounds like she's had the emotion fucked out of her post traumatic stretch disorder as Dre Raven puts it in the chat come on come on at this point all she's doing is talking to save face you've been listen you've been ran through by the blue check mo mafia and because you weren't and because you were feeling some type of way about the fact that they were smashing other chicks, now all of a sudden they didn't add value to your life. And you mean that. Brittany, that's on you, sweetie. That's on you. Now I'm sure if she watches, well, Donovan, you've been dumped, you've been you've been dumped, and this and that was on. Yes. Yes, I've made bad choices in women. I've made terrible choices in women. The difference is, is I can admit it. Brittany cannot. Brittany can't, she can't admit. Women like Brittany cannot admit. They want to be able to talk shit about men on one side. Well, men ain't shit is basically what she's saying. That, that, that's what she's saying. She's saying men ain't shit. Men ain't shit. Well, if no man added value to your life ever, and you mean that, that's a you problem, Brittany. That's not a man problem. Uh, Dre Raven on the Sharp Stream side says, Brittany is like shrimp cocktail on ice at the party. Everybody wants some and has some when it's first set out. After it's been sitting out for a couple of hours, the ice is melted. You try it if you're hungry. Six hours after that, when the party's over and the last few shrimps are floating in the tepid ice melt, no one is taking that home for leftovers. <laughs> wow. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. <laughs> That's funny. But this is her. Now, see, now, Br see, now Brittany is a little bit upset. And this is where her misandry is coming out. Last question, hold on, hold on. Last question here. Do you regret choosing those men? Here we go. As men you took serious? Just called her out. Um, I don't, I they can't. No value. You said they brought no value. So here we I go. See? genuinely as a person cannot hold hate in my heart. I don't hold a grudge. I can't be mad. So this is funny. This is why Myron is looking at the camera and smiling. Because six seconds ago, she said, no man has ever brought, no man that I've lost has brought value to my life. And I mean that. But then in the same breath, she says, I can't hold hate in my heart. Like, who is this woman trying to fool? Like, Brittany, just because you're speaking in a boring monotone does not mean that we don't see that below the surface is a boiling, mad, pissed off misandrist who is upset that she's been passed around. Come on, like, at least keep it real. Listen, niggas ain't shit, but I'm picking these niggas. 
That's basically what she's saying. Damien602, another five British pound super chat, says one in five women in the U.S. are on antidepressant medication uh, meds. Exhibit A. Absolutely. Absolutely. When you ask that, no, I still have love for those people. Um, I think ev I still have love for those people. Translation. I would still fuck them if they called me. This is ridiculous. This is stupid. Every decision is a good decision and leads you on the path to where you need to be. Oh my God. But, this um, is all just nonsense. Did it hurt? Yeah, but I think I genuinely wouldn't be the person I am today if I didn't go through those things. Oh, so you like who you are today. A woman who wants to be a single mother, a woman who's chosen nothing but men who don't uh, hold value, have never had value, uh, offered value in her life, and a woman who wants to put off marriage until she's presumably in her 30s? Yeah, you nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. Emotional damage! <laughs> yeah, real talk. Do you have a question? Yeah. I, just say one thing. I, think there's a, I think there's a couple of sort of like, there's, there's different impulses sort of banging together here, right? Because, it, you know, you're right. Because the, the reality is, unfortunately, I think all of us get bored, you know, like sexually. I, I think that men and... Uh, see, I got to disagree with Troy here again. I agree and I disagree. Yes, men and women get bored sexually. Here's the difference, Troy. And listen, love Troy to death. I've, I, dude, I've known him longer than anybody. Love Troy to death. He's the man. But what Troy fails to acknowledge in this particular diatribe is that, yes, men and women do get sexually bored. But when women get sexually bored, that's, that's just the cross they have to bear. Like I said, women in this country live the best lives of any class of human on the planet. Being sexually bored after having been ran through, hey, you had your fun with orgasms and all that. You can't have it all forever. Men, we have it differently. So yes, men and women do get sexually bored. The difference is, is that men, we don't get damaged from from scratching that itch. Women do. And, and women, you know, you're with somebody. That's the big problem with monogamy, isn't it? People want mm. variety. Like we all want, we all want the security. Yes. Yeah. No, 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 no. People want variety. And Troy is right. People want variety. But variety damages women. Variety damages women, and that's the crux of the situation. Listen, I'm, and I'm, I'm, listen, I've said this a hundred times. I will never sit here and make an argument that being a stay-at-home mom is more exciting than being a hoe. <laughs> Dude, being a thought is awesome. Dude, it's different dudes every night and parties and getting, you know, getting butt fucked on yachts and all this other kind of stuff. That's exciting. That's a hell of a that's a hell of a lot more exciting than changing a diaper at three or three o'clock in the morning because your kid won't go to sleep because it's hungry or it has to shit or both. Like, I get that, but is it more fulfilling, right? Does it have a positive impact on your life? See, we like the snuggles, we like the Netflix, but we also want that kind of, you know, variety as well. And I think you're right. I think a lot of people that do get together and they get into a, you know, committed bond at a young age. All right. <laughs> I know people are going to disagree, but, you know, they do end up, they, they do end up splitting up. I mean, I, I know people in Russia. I know, I know people in, in, in Russia and former Eastern, you know, Soviet Union. People get married very young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Troy is using the I know people that. And again, listen, love Troy to death. I have to respectfully disagree with him. I have to respectfully disagree with his, with his argument tact. I think he's trying to run game here. I think that's what's happening. I could be wrong. Listen, maybe Troy really feels this way, but, you know, I, 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 listen, if he's running game, he's doing a very good job of it. Young, and a lot of those couples end up splitting up yeah. because, you know, seven years later, they're like, oh, fuck, this is a bit boring. Mm -hmm. um, so there is that problem. But what everyone else is countering that with is the, is the bigger question of, okay, but how do you want your life to, to shape out? It's kind of difficult. And that's the question, right? If a man is, if a man wants variety and he goes out and he seeks and gets that variety, it doesn't damage him at all. Men, we are physically and mentally and spiritually designed to have sex with many women and not, and not to have any bad side effects. There are exceptions to the rule, but men as a collective, we are designed for that. Now, some people would disingenuous, well, have you seen the Rocco Sofredi? Rocco Sofredi is an Italian spicy movie star who apparently is suffering a whole lot of mental stuff because he's banged, you know, tens of thousands of women and he's done it on camera. Okay, exception to the rule, I get it. It does happen. But the average rank and file man, men as a collective, if we sleep around, if we bang a lot of bitches, we're good. We're fine. It doesn't work that way for women. Mm -hmm. In the short term to marry those two things together, isn't it? Because you're probably, what you're saying now, you know, you probably say, yeah, I want to, I'm happy being on my own, happy being single. That's great. You know, Try but, the mic. Speaking the mic. 
Sorry. Um, yeah, so, you know, there's, there's two impulses that are sort of separate kind of things, really. They're quite yeah. difficult to marry up, I think. Yeah. I think the biggest takeaway from this for all the women that are watching is the older you get, the less negotiating power you have to get the man that you want. Yep. Yeah. I think that's the biggest takeaway. There here it is. is that as you get older, your value does go down as a woman. And I Look at Brittany. Look at look, look at her face as Myron says this. Yep. Yeah. I think that's the biggest. There it is. See? Watch. Marry up, I think. Yeah. I think the biggest takeaway from this for all the women that are watching is the older you get, the less negotiating power you have to get the man that you want. Yep. Yeah. I think that's the. There it is. There it is. That's a genuine smile because she knows it's true. She knows it's true. She knows it's true. She, the older she gets, the older she gets, the less negotiating power she has. But she's thinking to herself, well, it's not going to happen to me. Yes, I'm not going to be as attractive at 35 as I am now at, at, at 25, but I'll still have high value options. She knows she's not going to be as attractive in five years, 10 years, but she thinks like most American women that she's going to have the same options. American women, dude, Western women are the only brand of woman who thinks they're going to have the same quality of options as their value decreases. That's absolutely stupid. That's the, I mean, it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. No. You're not, you are absolutely not, absolutely not NOT going to have high value options when you are, when you are 10, 15 years past your prime. It's just not going to happen. The biggest takeaway here is that as you get older, your value does go down as a woman. And that doesn't mean your human value. Good. It means as in your, your dating marketability goes down because. Yeah. Looks like uh, Miss Penn over there. Oh my God. Let's turn this down. It looks like it looks like it, there are there are choosing signals coming from Miss Penn, uh, Miss Penn and uh, Brittany. Watch. Biggest takeaway here is that as you get older, your value does go down. As a there it is. Did you see that? Did you th you saw the hair flip by Brittany? Okay, when she flips her hair, that means she's exposing her neck. That is an indicator of interest. Woman, sexual interest. And that doesn't mean your human value. It means as in your dare your. And look at Miss Penn over there. Fiddling with her chain, hand around the neck. Dating look, marketability look, goes down. Look, because licking her. Good God almighty. Jesus fucking Christ. As we always say, let's watch this with the sound down. Let's watch this with the sound down. Just watch. Watch Miss Penn. Look. Look, watch Miss Penn. Mm-hmm. Look at her licking her lips. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. You can't make this stuff up, guys. You can't make this stuff up. This is what, again... Like I said, man, body language is half the, it's half communication. It's going to be difficult for you to do, to compete with younger women because as men gain status and money, uh, they want younger, younger tighter, better. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So mm -hmm. that, it's been but, that way since the beginning of time. Rick, you know, all, all, I'm, all I'm saying though is for, for her in the moment now, it's difficult to think that, isn't it? Yeah. She, you know it's difficult to think that, Troy, but doing the difficult thing is what gets you the best life. Yes, it's difficult for it's difficult here in 2022 for young and beautiful girls to make the correct decision to get married young. It's very, very difficult, but that's why it's rewarding. That's why young, that's why young, attractive women who get married live the best lives because they make the very difficult decision in this day and age to forego sleeping around to lock down a man. This is delayed gratification. That's what, really what this comes down to. All these women at the table, Tori included, they don't understand the concept of delayed gratification. Tori, dude, Tori, Tori looks good enough to be married by now. There's a reason she's not. All of these girls are, 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 well, most of them, they're all attractive enough to be married, but they choose not to be. Every one of the girls sitting at that table has met their Mr. Right at least twice. There have been at least two men in there. And I say this all the time, guys. Every woman, every woman meets the man that they should have married. They meet their quote unquote Mr. Right. They meet him two, sometimes even three times. But because of the life and the city girl lifestyle and I want to put off marriage, they never do. Then when they're 36 with two kids by two different dudes, they're looking them up on Facebook or Instagram. Oh, look at this. Mark, the law student that I dumped because he was only in law school, now has his own private practice and he has five attorneys working underneath him. Hmm, how about that? Lance, who was in medical school, was broke as a joke, but he was in medical school. Now he has his own practice or he's a he's a trauma surgeon at XYZ Hospital making three, you know, 300 large a year. Every woman, dude, every woman, every woman, every attractive woman, every attractive woman at this table will meet Mr. Right at least two or three times. 
but they pass them up every single time. It's a shame. It really is. Karen C. with the 99 cent super sticker. Appreciate that. Uh, Dame Desmond Montgomery says, are you going to react to the black lady next? Not tonight, but I might another night. Uh, WM, $5, Super Chat, says, one out of five women are on head meds. Do you know what that means? Four out of five are undiagnosed. <laughs> That's good. Uh, Callie West, out in Miami, says, you're the best, Donovan. Best breakdowns ever. Appreciate that very, very much. Appreciate that very, very much. Um... Let's see. Okay, let's uh, let's continue. You know, like literally seeing it. She's out of peak. She's going to think, oh shit, one day yeah. I'm going to be 45 and I'm going to be less attractive. Mm -hmm. It's just I like, see. how does that, that mentality is really hard to, to understand. Yeah, it's difficult it? because it's hard to understand, but that's, this is why it's rewarding. Like, dude, Brittany may as well be naked. Like, we can see her tits right through her, we can see her tits right through her dress. This is ridiculous. Because when you're up, it's very difficult for you to think of the down. Yeah. And a lot of the times for women, unfortunately, they don't realize they're down until it's too late. Yep. You yeah. know, and we're just telling you guys from a male perspective, you That's know, right. guys that have options that are attractive, etc. The men that you're competing for, whether you want to admit it or not, which you guys are. Right. Yep. Um, because all <laughs> look at her. She's like, ah. all women are basically chasing the same archetype of man. I literally I guarantee if I put a calculator up here yeah. and ask you, what do you want in your guy? All of you guys are going to describe a man very similar. Yep. And six, six, six. Exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> that guy, unfortunately, because I know some of you guys were laughing at me earlier when I said, you know, I want to go that has a certain body count, whatever it may be. Um, the thing is, is that successful men are less common than beautiful women. Dude, th dude, Brittany. Oh, my God. Brittany is shooting her shot. She is physically shooting her shot at my so, watch. Just watch Brittany. Six, six, six. Just watch. Dude, wa look at her body language. She's she's leaning toward him. Exactly. Yeah. Look. So that guy. Look, watch this. Because I know some of you guys were laughing Just at me earlier Brit. when I said, you know, I want to go that has a certain body count, whatever it may be. Um, the thing is, is that. There it is. You see a genuine smile. She's genuinely smiling at him. When a girl smiles at you, she's turned on by you. Successful men are There it is. Look, 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 look. Putting the hair back behind her That's ear. That's than beautiful women. Uh-huh. So I, I don't think women understand that you actually do have this, the card stacked against you when it comes to getting a commitment. You can yep. get attention, for sure. You get sex, for sure. Easily. But can you get commitment from that high-value guy and he's going to take you seriously no. and you're going to be the main chick? That's no. the real question. And if we're going to go on that game... No. There's far more losers with women versus winners. Because if you were a winner, you'd have a ring on your finger. And to my, I think there's only one girl with a ring on her finger. Oh! Her. <laughs> so, yes, so sir. That's, that's, <laughs> she said, yes, sir. It's a female metric of success. <laughs> Guys, ladies, whether you want to accept it or not, the male metric of success is not marriage. That's your metric of success. Nah. Our metric of success. Or a relationship. Let me finish. Oh, okay. Our metric of success is can you have sex with a lot of girls? Yeah. That's why when a man is able to have sex with a lot of girls, what do they do? They rarely settle down. Look at Dan Blazarian. Look at Hugh Hefner. Or if they do settle down, they end up, go ahead and fuck other girls anyway. That's right. So you got to understand that there is a different game being played by men versus women. Your game is to get married to the best guy that you can and lock him down. And most girls cannot do that shit. They can't. You had a point? Um, yeah, just hold hell, man. Okay. I personally, I, I really... Oh, here she goes. Now, Brittany. So, Brittany, I, honestly, that I should have played the... Uh, I should have done this. I should have. I should have played that, but... I didn't. It is what it is. But all of that now, Brittany's going to come back. Let's let's just say here. I don't believe that there are very many good men out there. And I, I don't believe that there are very many good men out there. Well, there you go. That that's the, listen. This is Misandrous speak. This is the, the, the I don't believe that there are very many good men out there. This is misandry. OK. She does not believe that there are very many good men out there. Dude, the world is filled. There, I'm going to tell you what. There are more good men than there are good women. Listen, man, there are good there are good women out there. Not not all women are not all women are trash. But in the West, you got to be able to coach your woman. You have to coach and train your woman to be the woman that you want and need her to be. Women no longer come ready made for relationships. Okay? So when you select a woman, you got to understand that she is kind of just it's just kind of a kind of a a, a a piece of clay. You have to shape and mold her in, into you what into what you want and need her to be, right? Women, there can be good women out here, but you have to have the balls and the fortitude to be able to train them. But for this woman to say, I don't think that there are very good very, very many good men out here. Well, here we go. She just said men ain't shit. So she basically she literally just told us there we hate men, and this is funny. This is funny. Jay Blaze Eleven says they're all invisible to her, of, of course. And I've said this, and I've said this all, and I say this all the time too. I say this all the time. 
most men are sexually invisible to most women. So when you ask women, well, who do you think cheats more, men or women? They almost always say, well, men cheat more. And the reason why they say that men cheat more is because they're not thinking about 100% of men. No, they're thinking about the top 10% of men. Because only 10% of men, only 10% of all men are sexually visible to women. The bottom 90% of men are invisible sexually to women. So for Brittany to sit here and say, I don't believe that there are many good men out there, she's basing this on the top 10%. And the reason why she says that there are not very good many good there, there are not very many good men out there is because she had the audacity to think that her vagina was good enough to keep a man around for just her and only her. Her ego got in the way. She feels some type of way that a dude wants a little bit of variety. Maybe he wanted a girl with bigger tatas, maybe a little bit, maybe, maybe some more curves, but he was willing to come back to her. Nope, she had to have it all. She had to have it all. But what these girls don't understand is that she's not offering her, she's not offering these men anything she hasn't given to another man, right? That's the this is the million dollar question to women like Brittany. What do you offer? What can you offer? What do you offer to a man that you have never given to another man? I'll wait. They can't answer that. So if you can't offer a man something you've never given to anyone else, then how can you expect him to just, how can you expect him to be sexually faithful to you? You can't. Bitch, you're lucky he even likes you. If you can tolerate him going out and smashing other chicks, as long as he keeps it away from you, you really shouldn't, you really shouldn't worry about it. But no, the female in and the female ego tells her and the world tells her, you are so awesome. You are so awesome. You should be sexually enough for high value men. No, one woman is never sexually enough for high value men. I don't care what anybody says. I don't live my not life like thinking. There either. Oh, I, I'm not saying there. I'm not saying there are. I I'm just saying. John said that. I am. Right. You guys think oh like men are the prize? I don't think that. Like think at all. You um, yeah, you guys think men are the prize? I don't think that. Yep. Yep. She's at, at, at this point. This is just her feelings. This is just her feelings. Dudes, she's been run through by the blue. Che she's been run through by a bunch of blue checks. And because they weren't sexually loyal to her, she thinks that they're that they're bad men. Uh, Mark LeBrant says, Brittany is for recreational use only until she provides value. That's all women. Women are recreational use only until they prove otherwise. We're not saying men are the prize. We're just saying that certain men that you chase after. No, no, no. He said you live your life looking for the right husband. I men, men are the prize, though. Yes. Because cause, cause it comes down to supply and demand. This is the pay. It, this is this is. I mean, <laughs> right. Like, you know what? Hold on. You know what? Let, let's do this. Okay. Yeah, it's he's right. right. It comes down. It does come down to supply and demand. It absolutely does come down to supply and demand. There are far more beautiful women than there are. I'm gonna tell you what. There are. There are so. There are less men available to the women. There are less men available than the women who want them. Let me repeat that. There are less men available than the women who want them. Myra knocked, Myra knocked it out of the park. Dude, it is literally supply and demand. This is why these blue check marks can go out and smash all these other broads because Brittany is attractive-ish, but dude, like there are, dude, there are younger, tighter women out there than even her. Like you're not special, sweetheart. The reason why women feel some type of way about a dude running around on them is because they think they're special. Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, so let's. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and go to the poll. Let's go ahead and go to the poll here. <laughs> so um, we did a poll. We did a poll with Dev. We said, uh, "Who's who's? What's Britney's body count?" Over 500 or under 500, 346 people voted. 35% of you said under 500. 64% of you said over 500. So 64% of you were correct. 35% of you were wrong. Thank you very much for voting. Uh, let's start the next uh, breakdown. Here we go. Beautiful and being on a man's arm is bringing value. Speak to like what? Oh, sorry. Yeah, a lot of men want that. A lot Bro, of men want I see where like, she's coming from. The what? IG baddie the beautiful woman no, they don't baddie. care but, but yeah. the ig baddie the blah 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 blah. see again this is this is women this again is women thinking short term yes yes 
yes, women are, yes, women, men do want a beautiful woman on their arm. But but just like Myron says, can you keep that? Yeah, that's, 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 <laughs> yes, a that's, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. But you got to remember that, um, you got to remember, yes, to be on a man's arm, right? Yes, that is eye candy. It makes him look better. But the key is, can you consistently be on his arm? And I think that's mm. where most women fail. Mm -hmm. I, think I think just being on the arm is enough. What the reality is, how many times are you going to be on his arm? Is it going to be you? Is it going to be another girl? Whatever. Uh -oh. The girl that stays on the arm is a girl that actually adds value, value. outside of her beauty. Yes, mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. So, um, so because I re sorry, sorry. She had a point. You had something too? And then who else? You had something and then who else? And then you? Yeah. Okay, cool. Want to make sure all the ladies get a chance to go. Did you? Did that Did that make sense? Or do you have anything else besides a move to her? Or move to her? We can move on. <laughs> yeah, we can move on. Translation, you're right. Okay. Um, so this kind of goes into you saying women don't have much to offer or they expect men to do more. Or they in general. expect men to do more, yeah. even if they're like Penis. financially stable, whatever it is. The super richest chicks get married. That, I think that girls, mm -hmm. sorry, I think that girls have got to a point, this is my opinion, Okay. that girls have got to a point where um, guys are so draining. Like seriously, as a woman, sometimes you really do have to put up with so much that one, your man would not put up with. <laughs> like I do. That's funny. Men, women have to put up with things that men don't put up with or men don't put up with. And the reason why is what Myron said at the end of the last video. It's supply and demand. There are certain, listen, man, there are certain things that women can do that we can't. Okay. There are certain things that women can do that we can't do. We're not complaining about that. At least not over here. At least uh, not over, not over here. There are certain things that women can do that men can't. I'm not about complaining about that. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. OK, that's just all there is to it. But then women complain that there are things that men can do that women can't. Women only see again, women characterize something as a double standard if it doesn't benefit them. That's what it comes down to. Right. That's what it comes down to. And so for Brittany to sit here and say, well, you know, they, they don't put up with things that we have to put up with supply and demand. The less there are of you, the less you have to put up with. OK. The less there are of you, the less you have to put up with. That's all there is to it. This is why Britney has to put up with a bunch of shit from 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 these ain't shit dudes, because beauty is beauty is more common than high value men. That's all there is to it. One percent of what my man does, and I, he's gone, and that's clear. So it's like you should do a little more. I'm take I'm taking mental distress, and and I'm do a little more. Like what? Like what? Like what? If you're after a high value man, his value is high. That's more than enough. So I gotta be high value and I gotta do more? Nope. Sorry. Nuh uh. Nope. That's not the way it works, y'all. See, Brittany, again, see, Brittany, she's overestimating her value. Brittany has high sexual market value, but she has almost no relationship market value. That's why dudes just hit it and quit it. You understand what I'm saying? This is why dudes just fuck her and chuck her because, okay, she looks good naked, but she doesn't offer anything outside of her ass. That's literally it. That's literally it. But now she's complaining that she has to put up with a bunch of shit. Hey, newsflash. Nothing comes without cost. Nothing comes without cost. If you want to deal with high value men, there are certain things you're going to have to deal with. That's just all there is to it. If you're going after a certain type of man, there are certain things that you are going to have to deal with. Those are facts. Brittany, like most American women, they want all of, they want all the benefits without any of the costs. Eating it, like, I don't know. I just feel like it, you can say, I'm no, no, I'm going to... How, how me no, too. Well, I'm confused. I'm like, confused. Too. how are you bringing so much more than he is? Where you're? No, no, no. Stressed? I'm saying, I'm saying. She just touched him. Wow, dude. She's like, too. How are you bringing so much more than he is? Where you're? No, no, no. I'm saying, I'm saying. That's why I feel like men should do more because they genuinely like take a toll on you mentally a lot more than your girl takes a toll on you. Do you? Oh my God, a lot more than your girl takes a toll on you, Brittany, Brittany, sweetie. This is part of the cost. And again. I tell you guys all the time, listen, man, you can't expect a relationship to just be smooth all the time. A lot of guys have these unrealistic expectations as a guys to just really giving up. The first time we have an argument, she's fucking gone. No, the first time she screws up, she's gone. No, dude, women are going to screw up, man. Women are going to fuck up. We're going to fuck up. And when you deal with a woman in a relationship, you're going to have to deal with the fact that they are a little bit crazy. I say this all the time. Women are never chemically identical from one day to the next. 
You have to deal with their PMS. You got to deal with their emotional shenanigans. They're not reasonable or rational. This doesn't make them bad. This makes them women. This is part of the package. Okay. The cost, the cost for having companionship, regular sex, uh, you know, someone, so, someone to spend your life with, the cost is putting up with the shit that women do. I'm not talking about getting out of pocket. I'm not talking about, you know, disrespecting you. No, I'm just talking about just the rank and file. Every once in a while, Dev gets a little bit, nah, and I'm just like, all right, fuck it. I'm coming upstairs. I'm Listen, man, she's she, she's losing her mind. I'm out of here. You know what I mean? I'm, 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 I'm just going to, you have to deal with certain things, man. As a man in a relationship, you're just going, there are things that you are just going to have to deal with as a man when dealing with a woman. That's just part of the cost. Brittany seems to be the only one who has a problem with it. Feel that way. Do you, have you seen Myron's head? I feel like men are really. Str- I don't know. I it's know. It's, 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 probably the you go after. it's probably the men you go after. Right. It's going it's to come both yeah. ways, though, right? Because okay. some women, some women are also going to be really draining. Yeah. I mean, yes. speak to Johnny okay. Depp. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Amateur, okay. I, I guess you're right. I'm yeah. speaking yeah. in my yeah. personal experience. Yeah. Okay. The thing is, is that I mean. You you can say that, but in general, most men are way easier to please than most women. There you yes, go. Yes, yeah, they sure. are. Yeah. Yeah. Men tell you, yeah. you yeah. Men, yeah. You're yeah. probably going after. No, I'm not talking about easy to guys. please. I'm not talking about easy to please. I'm talking about like you're not crying over me in bed every night. Like what? you're That's not. not, that. That. not what the fuck would we do? That? That. That's why I'm saying you should do a little more. Like no, 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 no way should make you feel like that. If he's putting himself first, you put yourself first, and then you there shouldn't be guys. Oh, that's wrong too. If he's putting himself first, you put yourself first. See, see again. All of this is code for if he's fucking around, then you should fuck around. Okay, cool, very good. This is this is this is this is more flawed mentality. If he sleeps around, then if he sleeps with another girl, you sleep with another guy. Sweetheart, he's going to drop you. He's gonna drop you is what he's gonna do. Okay, if he's selfish, then you be selfish. All right, that's why all these women are single. Because well, it's an eye for an eye. We should be equal. If he sleeps around, then I can sleep around. No, it's not how it works. There are more of you than there are of him. That's why. That's why. That's why when he sleep when he sleeps around, you don't go anywhere. But when he but when you sleep around, if you step out on him, he's gone. Women don't get that. They don't understand that. Oh, I'm definitely talking on personal. <laughs> you missed a big point here. <laughs> well, these somebody, athletes, what do you I'm expect? Saying. Oh yeah, there it is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the the issue here is that you're kind of taking your experience and trying to attribute it to all women, but the reality is that men are far easier to please in general than yes. women are. Yep. Yeah. Women have a limit, like a whole array of requirements yeah. that they want from men. As a matter of fact, we've asked women on the show well over a thousand at this point. If you ask them what do you want in a man, all of them. Dre just- Raven says a man who owns a yacht isn't going to crab you, baby girl. Exactly. The fuck is she? Dude, what the hell is she asking for? Describe a well above than average man. Yeah. Versus if you ask a guy, guys are okay with average chicks, but women are not okay with average men in general. Oh, Emotional yeah. damage. So, I mean, I, I, think, <laughs> I think that fresh. has to do kind of with, like, just the caliber of men that you deal with, which, unfortunately, ladies, <laughs> yeah. right, they, le- learn from her. Um, <laughs> she higher, knows. Oh, wow. The higher you go up the totem pole, the more wow. successful the man is, the more money he has, mm-hmm. the more status he has. Dude, she is. Dude, she wants to suck Myron's. Dude, she wants to smoke Myron's sausage right now. And the more sought after he's going to be by other women and you are going to have to compete and what you're probably feeling this sadness and crying dude britney's not listening to anything myron is saying look at her look at her face sought after he's going to be by other women and you are going to have to compete and what you're probably feeling this sadness look and at her. in your in your bed is competition <laughs> anxiety like other women want your man it's so funny he is absolute dude it, th- this is oh shout out to ali in the chat i didn't even see her in there ali the assassin is in the chat yeah. And, and a lot of the time, you're going to lose because Good. guys oh. want to fuck other girls. You're never going to be able to get a high-status man all to yourself. That's right. So um, you had I, something. I, 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 Listen, I, 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 talk I, I, about the I, I, complexity I, I, of what women want. She <laughs> dumped the guy because he didn't lie <laughs> to her the way That's she right. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. He lied to me this way. He didn't lie to me the other way. I want to feel good. I know, but that's tricky. Okay, so we'll go down the line here. Go ahead. I did. Okay. So I literally did a talks after eight with my homegirl, and we talked about how how women aren't uh, aren't taught how to love men properly. Oops. You get what I'm saying? Uh-oh. We are taught that men are the bag. You get Uh-oh. what I'm saying? Oh, oh, hold and, up, hold and up. The ex- extra bag after we get our bag. You feel mm-hmm. me? Um, I do men believe that men are simple. They tell us what we want. We just don't listen. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, it was something else. I had another point. Um, as a woman, I had a man tell me how 
um, how I am not the shit. And it kind of hurt my feelings, but it built me up at the same time because uh -oh. it showed me, it highlighted the things that I needed to work on within oh, myself. Oh my goodness, this as bitch is spitting. This so bitch is spitting. when you get a man, a real man, you have to be ready for that man. Because if you're not, if you're not, if you don't know who you are and you're not real with yourself, then yes, mm. uh, what, what a man will say will trigger mm -hmm. you and make you feel some type of way. But if you're listening, oh, oh shit. We don't like to listen. We like, we like shit our way. Oh me? shit. Um, um, then you'll miss that. Oh, shit. whoa, hold up. And then that's why he with Sally down the street because Sally cooked. <laughs> yeah. And he told you, bitch, I like cooking. Yeah. Damn. I like the bitch that cook. so if you went Oh, cooking, my God. You go down to Sally that oh, cook. no. You can't be mad. Oh, my that goodness. Nigga just said to you, I like the bitch that cook. No. Oh, my God. Oh, holy moly. You cannot holy. be upset. You get what wow. you get what you I feel like as, as women and men, we need to come as whole as motherfuckers. I can't, I can't so make mad. you happy. Dude. 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 Only because I ran into a man that was healthy enough to tell me about my motherfucking ass. Oh. I was healthy enough to be like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I could kind of work on some shit on my motherfucking yes. self. What the fuck? Hold yeah. up. No, the fuck you didn't. I'll be goddamn. That bitch is spitting. Dude, that bitch is spitting. That bitch is spitting. She's got the most, well, other than Alice, she's got the most sense of any bitch on the goddamn panel. There it is. There it is. There it is. She's telling you straight up, if a dude, and, and men, we tell, we tell men, we, the women we care about, we say, look, this is what I want. This is what I want. This is what I need. This is what I want. This is what I need. If we care about you, we will tell you what we want. But if we don't give a fuck about you, we'll just be like, all right, well, if you don't do this, I'm just going to put you in the recreational use only category. Um, and, and, and here's the other thing, too. Damn. Here you go, just for, for that. Oh, thank um, you, so the other yeah. thing, too, is I, I want to let the women know you're lucky if he tells you I like a girl that cooks. Oh, my God. Most of the time, if he really has options like that, he'll just look around. Okay, there it this is. chick doesn't cook. Okay, yep. she has a couple bad habits. Yep. Yep. What's yep. going to happen is he's going to put you in the sex you category only. Hey. Fuck you. And then you wonder why you don't get um, you don't get called back or whatever. Bingo. Or that, you. Yeah. Most women... Can't handle the truth, and thank you for expressing that earlier today. Yeah, I can't. real yeah. talk. I can't. Um, so, and here's the thing. No, no, no. I just appreciate the fact that you admitted it yeah, because most women like... will not admit it. No, so my thing admit. is this: I'm since sorry. most women can't can't take the truth, and most women <laughs> don't want to self improve, and they... oh my god, this nigga, this dude just with the fifty dollars super chat said Boosie spitting. <laughs> yeah, she does look like Boosie though, don't she? I'm mad at her though. I'm, mad. I'm sure gonna spice everything nice. You need to accept me, however I come. No. I'm not gonna self improve. Team Peterson says Allie has a ring, family, and life she and and life she wants. You pen and OnlyFans, Britney are recreational use only. <laughs> yeah. Well, most guys do is they say, okay, listen, this girl's a lost cause. I'm just gonna have sex with her, yeah. and I'm not gonna take her seriously. And then he keeps you on the string and tells you what you want to hear mm -hmm. until you eventually break up with him and find something more. Stable. There it is. Mm -hmm. But the there it issue is. is that at least as a man, when you get rejected by a woman, you know you're getting rejected. You could take the L and move on. With women, y'all don't know when you take the L's because the guy's just not gonna say shit to you. Yeah, he's gonna yeah. keep dragging you along. Just, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Do you have something. I think you'll take you next, Versace. By the way, is Dragon still rapping? I remember that cut he did with Eve. Let's talk. I want to talk about who I am. Uh, 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 I think you'll take the L <laughs> if you are genuinely into the guy, right? So one of the best things my husband ever did for me, and I'm very comfortable saying this stuff because, you know, it helps other women, hopefully, to get married. Girl, get the ring. The streets are rough. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I She's at mad again. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can hang out there. I'm 27. We'll turn it to this side after if you guys have something. Go ahead. Here. So I asked him one time because I was getting like irritated about, you know, he, he didn't want to marry me and I wanted to know why. That's why I had gotten, I got that ring when he was my boyfriend because I, I effed up big time. So I was like, you know what, let me show you, like, I want, I want a commitment and let me spend my money on that. So I asked him one time, wow. I was like, why won't you marry me? A millionaire would marry me. And he told me they would marry you. And once they got to know you, they would send you right back. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Holy cannoli. Wow. Tom with the TKO. Let's listen to that again. God damn. And let me spend my money on that. So I asked him one time, I was like, wow. why won't you marry me? A millionaire would marry me. And he Woo! told me they would marry you. And once they got to know you, they would send you right back. Oh my God. God damn. Look, man. Allie was spitting the truth. She was spitting the truth. Jay Blaze says Allie is uh, spitting. Is Brittany listening? Nope. Hell no. Hell no. Guys, 
this is what I tell you guys. This is what Boosie just said. This is what Ali just said. And this is what I've told you way back in the day. You got to strip your woman down to the studs, man. You got to break your woman down to build her up. Devin will tell you the first, dude, the first few weeks of the training process were not easy. There was a lot of yelling and a lot of crying. And I wasn't crying. And I wasn't crying. Okay. Dude, I called, dude, I called her every, dude, every name in the book. Dude, I called her a hoe. I called her a slut. Dude, you're a fucking hoe. You're a slut. You got to stop doing this. I said, Devin, look, sweetheart, when you do this, you act like a slut. And I'm not going to come, I'm not going to train a woman who acts like a slut. You got to tell her these things. Tom told Allie, hey, you know what? A millionaire would marry you, but if he got to know you, he'd send you back. That was all Allie needed to hear. Only only women who are mentally weak, men, women talk about how they're mentally strong and this and that and the other, except for when a man actually tells them about herself, tells her about herself. When you're honest with a woman, all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, I can't believe you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, I thought you wanted me to be honest. And then when you're honest, oh my God, you're an asshole. Oh, oh shit. shit. <laughs> oh, Damn. Oh, yeah. oh, all the time, all the time. But you know, I think we like a-holes with a heart of gold. I'm telling you, I'm well cared for now. But so I asked him, I'm like, well, what? An a-hole with a heart of gold. Do you know what that's called being, gentlemen? That's called being a man. That's called being a man. It's a shame that when you're honest with women about what you want, you're considered to be an asshole. It's a damn shame that when you're honest to women, honest with women about who and what they are, you're an asshole. It's a damn shame. An a-hole, an asshole with a heart of gold. Translation, a motherfucking man. What do I have to do to be your wife? Like, what kind of wife are you looking for? And that's often a conversation that women won't have. They won't even ask their, their boyfriend that they care about, well, what wife Ooh. are you into? Like, let me find out. And he gave me the boxes to, to check. I completed the task. And here, I like, he, he did what he said he was going to do, you know? But it's it's nice to get that feedback. It's kind of sexy. And listen, yes, if a guy, if, a, if you're dating them. a guy, he probably has options, right? And so of course if he does. you don't cook for him, he's just going to naturally find a girl who will. Mm -hmm. Because he needs his needs get met. Like, pussy, if you're a guy that has options, pussy's just... And paying to get into the club. It's like Real talk. Standard. Real talk. And then what else do you bring to the table that he likes? So if he likes to go cook, right. he's going to want you to cook. If you don't cook, he's like, all right, well, she is pump and dump only. Still yep. got to look for the main girl. There you go. Facilitate all oh, my needs. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Guys, John is a millionaire. Man, these bitches still don't listen. It's incredible. Yeah. Again, this is a guy of value. Uh -huh. A guy that is definitely on a certain level. There you go. Regular nigga on the street. This is like Troy's Francis. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I wanted to ask, like, what would separate one woman from all the other competitions? That's a good question. Before we yeah. answer that, I want to make sure all the ladies, before we switch to another topic, did, did anyone here have something? You, Pen, go. <laughs> 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 oh, sorry. I no, no, you. no. I wasn't angry. It's just, I just some problematic things that have been yes. said. No, I didn't think they were problematic. I just didn't feel like they applied to me. Oh, oh so, like, so she's I don't special. Feel like I have trouble listening or uh, taking feedback. Okay. Um, Do you have a boyfriend? No. <laughs> oh, there it is. Gotcha, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, she seemed okay, to be so a good you, sport so about that. You just don't think it applies to you. Yeah, specifically what she was talking about. Like, I feel like the conversation Merge. is turning into a lot of like, well, women do this and women do that and women do that. And I feel like the Chandler stuff doesn't rules. apply to me. If it didn't apply to you, sweetheart, you'd be in a relationship. So you can say whatever. I mean, listen, she's obviously very attractive, but her PhD is weighing her down. Like what do you do? Roles? What do you mean? You are sweet. Yeah, maybe, maybe, you, you. maybe you have value. Do tell. What do you bring to the table? Ooh. Do tell. What do you bring to the table? Here we go. Should I answer that question for real? Yeah. yeah. Yes. What do I bring to the table? Yeah. Um, she is sexy, man. Like I will give it to her. I like her. I, I like. I, I do like that she has a little. She has a very. She's like sweet and spicy. I like that. That's uh, that's very very cool. I can cook. I'm super <laughs> smart. I'm very sweet and genuine. I'm not a stuck up bitch. Um, I'm from Mississippi originally, so okay. I'm just very down to earth. I don't really care about someone's status or what they can do for me. I genuinely see people as people. Well, oh, here we yeah. go. Here we go. How'd you know? I've been there. Because <laughs> there's only one town in Mississippi worth visiting. It's Biloxi. That's my hometown. She, she Biloxi brings girl. sex, silence, and a sandwich. Atta boy. <laughs> nice Lord. I can do better. There it is. What's your sign? Oh, yeah. oh God. Here. Listen to Pogson. Oh. I think it shows. It does. Yeah, girl. The main. It does. Yeah. It 
All right. Uh, <laughs> I got your sign yeah, line. Go so you had a question. <laughs> Uh, earlier about the competition, or yeah, your your basically your question was how does a woman distinguish herself Stand from up. the competition? Right. Yes. The question. Mm -hmm. All right. Easy. I guess we. I answered this a little bit yesterday. How do you distinguish yourself from your from the competition? You make yourself more valuable to the man, and you do this. You do this by becoming his helpmate. I said this yesterday. If he's an attorney, go get a paralegal. Go get a paralegal degree. If he's a doctor, get your CNA. Rinse and repeat. Oops. You turn it to the guys. Try what's your what's your what's your thoughts on this? <laughs> what what makes well, the stand up? I mean, it's gonna it's gonna depend from guy to guy, isn't it? Because I mean, a lot of people in this. Okay, this is uh, diminishing returns at this point. Let's go to the last fresh and fit video. And again, guys, I'm going to be answering your. I'm going to be answering your phone calls. I'm going to be answering your voicemails. I'm going to be, I'm going to be answering your voicemail. So this little breakdown, this breakdown is with the uh, uh, is the fresh and fit after hours. With uh, TSR Towers own the lovely and talented Janelle Gordon. And she drops absolute bomb after bomb on this. Let's go ahead and get this party started. Uh, apparently as now my wife. Okay. Anyway. Uh, I don't get it. Cool. Uh, right, fresh. Ladies, first question on the panel. So ladies. So ladies. So this question here we brought up on a show prior to this with some other guys on the panel. Uh -huh. Why don't you ladies here on the panel yourself? So you got two options here. You have a uh -oh. guy, right? Uh -huh. Successful. Good looking. At the same time, we'll take care of you. However, he may from time to time step on cheat. Oh boy! You got another guy, average guy, makes minimum income fifty k a year, but average. He may be faithful to you for the most part. Uh, Who would you pick and why? For the most part, we'll start right here. Let's you know. We'll, we'll start right here. Um, so basically, so when you described the my... second guy, you said he's faithful for the most part, and yeah, that's man. the part that made me decide to choose guy number one. Because if you're gonna cheat, you might as well. Go with the nigga that's gonna there take you, care of you. See, you there right. it is. You know what? I'm gonna change it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, change it. He, he okay. Beautiful. Okay. Um, from, from what you can see, <sighs> far as he can okay, see. So, me personally, I am not a fan of the cheating thing. I totally hear y'all loud and clear that it's gonna mm. happen if he has those options, but I'm not. Who is she? She's fucking beautiful. Here for that. If we're in a wow. relationship, I'm expecting faithfulness from you. Mm. So I'm probably gonna take the guy with 50k. And I'm gonna try to like boss him up so he can make more. I think that's what I'll do. Hey, boss him up. So you try oh, to boss on. him up. Come on. It's already bossed up because of the cheating. Yeah, but guess what? When you boss him up at that point, then he's going to be high value. Then he's definitely going to cheat. Come on. Look, look, look. Stop the cap. Well, I ain't trying to hear all that. If he's making 50K, then he can boss up more for sure. What if he doesn't want to? Oh, if he's not ambitious, I can't do anything with that. So. So. Here's a caveat. He has to be ambitious to make it work. Of course he does. Of course he, he does. He has to be. Interesting. Yeah. Right. I'd like to add something to that, though, real quick. So yeah. then if you boss him up, then he's going to cheat. Oh, <laughs> there it is. There it is. Sorry, I love you. I, I, I I told you. Told you. Told you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I'm you. sorry. I do love you, though. So y'all are serious about the whole, if you have options, you're going to cheat. There's no man that's an exception to that rule. Why no. Would, I mean, there's not. There's unicorns, but that's real here. Are they common? No. No. Have you seen a unicorn? <laughs> I haven't seen one. We tell no, unflattering no. truths about men and women. Yep. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. one of the unflattering truths about men is men who's faithful is their options most of the time. There you go. And normally, we, we found out it's too late because you're you're into a guy, he cheats, you're like, damn, why'd he cheat on me? Mm -hmm. I would yeah. argue it's good for you that he cheats uh -oh. and has sex with other girls. Oh, boy. How's that good? He came back to you. Oh. That's right. Because he considers you like his number one wife, someone that he prioritizes and that he loves just because. <laughs> Devin on the YouTube side says, nothing turns a man on more than his woman taking credit for his success. Yeah, right. Because he cheats on you doesn't mean he doesn't love you. And see, I haven't... It just means uh -oh. that he prioritizes. And that uh, Janelle's about to drop. She's about to drop bars. It's too late because you're, you're into a guy, he cheats, you're like, damn, why'd he cheat on me? Mm -hmm. I would yeah. argue it's good for you that he cheats and has uh -oh. sex with other girls. Oh, boy. That good? He came back to you. That's right. Because he considers you like his number one wife, someone that he prioritizes and that he loves just because he cheats on you doesn't mean he doesn't love you. There you see, go. It just means that see? he loves variety. No big deal. I haven't reached the level of maturity where I can accept that. <laughs> hey, well, sweetheart, you better hurry because time's a wasting. Just so, like, I get it. I Most mean, women yeah. on the planet have not, dear. Well, you're 30, though, so. I want my man to not hide it. Keep keep it clean. I don't ever want to find out, because if I do, I'm out. Like, cause I Well, there we go. There we see, there, see, see, you know, that, listen, that's the right answer. Guys, I say this all the time, man. And ladies, I say this all the time. Just, be, uh, uh, just because a man sleeps with another woman does not mean he does not love you anymore. It is literally just sex. 
That's all it is. That's all it is. But she gave the right answer. As long as I don't know about it, I'm good. As long as I don't know about it, I'm good. And it's 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 an unspoken agreement between the women and the high value men they belong to. It literally is unspoken. I know I can't handle it. So. Chris just had the calculator in the background just in case. That is very <laughs> I have a similar theory, but I'll tell you later. Yeah. Okay, cool. What about you? Uh the options again, even so though once I know a, So once again, attractive, good looking, um, successful, mm -hmm. uh, can take care of you, but may cheat from time to time mm -hmm. versus a guy that's pretty much average fifty K a year. May mm -hmm. may be faithful for the most part. Five nine, mm -hmm. five nine. Oh God! <laughs> so what'd you choose? I'm above average, so I don't do average. Like I don't do average. I will definitely take option number one. There because, it is. Um, See, Janelle said I don't do average, but she understands the cost that comes with that. Yeah, it's just sex. It's not that big of a deal. And although it is painful because our egos get in the way, um, it's just sex. And as long as here's my thing, and I've said this on the show before. Like, I'm okay, even with my guy. Like, I shouldn't have told him this when we started dating, but I was like, hey, I'll stay with you if you cheat. Oh, Janelle, <laughs> Janelle. Like, oh, it's no, not Janelle. Emotional, like, if I find that you guys have been like watching movies together and doing like stuff we do or writing each other, but you're not having sex, then I'm out. Mm. Like, if you have an emotional affair with some hoe in your inbox, which there I don't you know why you have an emotional affair with a hoe, but like, you know what I'm saying? I told him my mouth. That would make you stupid. That stupid. makes sense. But if he just fucks hoes because he is six eight with an eight pack and dimples, then I don't want to know about it. Wow. And if I find out, you know, it's I'm. Dude, Devin and I are thinking about going out there and visiting uh, Janelle and her man. I don't know, <laughs> dude. Six eight with dimples and an eight pack. I don't know about that. I'm going to be butt hurt, but I'll get over <laughs> it because he is high value, and I understand that that's going to happen with any guy I go to go. Dude. With. Because I'm only going with a high value man. Look at this. And I don't I don't care what Look people say if I'm 40. I obviously am able to get someone who's high value, so you guys know what you can do with that. I mean, those testa. <laughs> huh? Those are uh, titties. Well, he's more of an ass man anyway, so the hoes that he follows all have ass, to be honest. <laughs> I love what you said, though, ego. That's a very important, it's, important point. It's ego, and the thing is, women have to stop. Okay, so for women, sex is emotional. We think, oh, him making love to us it's like, oh, it's this emotional thing. We feel connected. Here we go. But to guys, it's not that way. It's just a new yoni to be inside of. And it's fun and exciting. And it's a crush. And they just want that for the moment. But then they're going to come back to you if you hold it down. Yo, she's like, hell I'm no, not nigga. With that. <laughs> but, but, hey. but the thing Here we go. Is, that's how it really goes. Most that's women how are it... in denial. But okay, so they well, just what a, are. Okay, so the same applies when you're married. That's like, it. When, when dude, married, yes. even more so when I'm married. And oh, I should have, I should have caveated this with my guy and say when we're married, honestly, because <laughs> when you're married, there's more to lose. You have kids, you have that's assets right. and mm -hmm. things. So mm -hmm. absolutely, he can fuck us when I'm married. I don't want to find out about it. <laughs> but I'm. I don't want to find out about it. See, look, look, check this out. Check this out. See, again, Janelle is spitting right here. And Janelle has a lot of courage to 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 mention these things. So here's what I'll say about this, okay? When it comes to ego, women have more ego than men. The difference between ego and confidence is ego comes from the outside. Egos are built with outside validation. This is why this is why we say I'm going to puncture his ego. I'm going to puncture my man's ego. I'm going to say something negative to him that's going to puncture his ego. Well, the reason why it'll puncture his ego is because he gets validation from her, not from himself. Confidence comes from within. You are able to give yourself validation. So here's an example. If a woman says, damn, you look good. Oh, great. I guess I look good. But that's just feeding his ego because before someone told him he looked good, he didn't really think so. You understand what I'm saying? Whereas a confident man be like, yeah, you know what? I look good today. A person, a man or a woman might not make one single comment about the way he looks. Guess what? He still knows he looks good because he has that confidence, right? Women have egos, especially when it comes to men and sex. And the main, and this is why women, this is why women say out loud that they cannot handle cheating because it is a blow to their ego. But there's a caveat to that. There's a caveat to that. So long as they don't find out. Even worse, as long as other people don't find out. This is the thing. This is the thing. These women are sitting here talking about, well, I would never, ever, ever, uh, I would never stay with a man who cheated on me. Yes, they would. And you want to know why we would? It's because women stay with quote-unquote cheating men all the time. 
the reason why they don't they stay with their cheating men is because nobody finds out about the cheating. Nobody finds out about the cheating. Maybe she'll find out once or twice, like Janelle apparently has. But as long as he doesn't throw it in her face and as long as other people don't know about it, that's cool. Because that's not a blow to her ego. Because women on the outside, oh my God. Uh, you know, Sarah's man cheated on her. I wonder what she's not doing. I mean, did she get fat? Is she not putting it down in the bedroom? Sarah knows that this is what other women are talking about when they find out that her man cheated. The worst thing you can do to your woman is allow her and other people to find out you stuck your dick in another chick. Because now she has to respond. Now she has to respond. Now she has to do something. And that's why these women at this table are saying, oh, no, uh-uh. If my man cheats, I'm out of there. If he sleeps with another woman, I'm out of there. She has to say that. And the reason she has to say that is that by admitting out loud that you would stay with your man if he cheated is literally just as, is literally just as bad as your man cheating and everyone finding out about it. That's what it is. That's what it is. Deep in the deepest recesses of their minds, these women know that they would stay with a cheating man if his value were high enough. They're not about to say that out loud because it makes them look bad. That's a blow to their ego. Because when she says, well, I would stay with a cheating man, other women, she thinks that other women are saying, well, what's wrong with her? If she would stay with a cheating man, what's wrong? No, 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 no. Dude, if your man has high, if your man has high enough value, if she loves you enough, if you bring enough value, if you bring enough excitement to her life, she will stay with you. She's not going to tell you that she's going to stay with you. And she's damn sure not going to admit to, to the world that she would stay with a cheating man, but she would. Because admitting out loud that you would stay with a cheating man is literally just as bad as people finding out that your man cheated. Thing is, y'all can, all the women can hate on me, but I'm actually being no, honest and real. It. You're being honest. It's, it that, sucks. Being honest, it doesn't but... mean it doesn't suck any less. There you go. But you have to look at it like it's just sex. It's variety. That's They're right. hardwired for it. That's right. And it's everywhere today. Hoes are in the inbox. They're everywhere. And it's just going to happen. I don't as like long getting as it comes chlamydia, back to me. Okay, so, so what about well, um, that part? Yeah, go, go, ahead. Ahead. Okay, go ahead. Now I'm like, do you guys, um, do you believe like in soul ties and stuff like that? I do. That? I'm a, oh, like, I'm in the spiritual world like a thousand percent. Yeah, okay, I do. So we are past, we are lovers in past lives. We've had millions of them. Right. So the thing with that is with the sleep, like I, dudes are going to do what they want to do. They are. Uh -huh. I understand that. Uh -huh. But it's like the, I guess with cheating, like with the soul ties, that's involved because people there's people that just think cheating is physical and stuff like that but there's it's like energetic cheating is only physical for men are there men who cheat for emotional reasons yeah but those guys are few and far between jay blaze 11 says kobe's women kobe's woman only got pissed when he got caught uh that's all i wanted to highlight uh from that uh from that particular video um janelle dude she dropped the mic she dropped the mic. These other bitches know. And it's funny. All of these bitches out here have stayed with cheating men. Whether they knew it or admitted it or not, they stayed. They stayed with cheating men. They can, Listen, they can tell us. Listen, they can tell us whatever they want. They can tell us whatever they want. It is what it is. Okay. Uh, let us now get to the, uh, let's get to the voicemail. So like I said, guys, like I said, if you have relationship questions, if you have relationship questions, uh, be sure to give us a call. Uh, be sure to call the inbox 305-304-7822-305-304-7822. Um, so uh, let's, uh, let's go to Adam in Texas. Let's go to Adam in Texas. Here we go. Hey, Donovan. This is Adam from Texas. Uh, my question is, is it even possible to have a healthy relationship with a female if intimacy is not involved, let's say that you wanted to have a, uh, a a friend that's a female, but you're not wanting to get serious with her. Is it even possible? I, my experience that uh, taking girls out on, you know, not necessarily dates, but we'll go out to uh, a movie or something like that. Mm -hmm. You go bowling or something like that. Oh, Adam, Adam. But, uh, Adam, 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 you know, Adam. after a couple of dates, she'll pressure me for some intimacy and uh, when, frankly, I tell her no, she immediately becomes disinterested and subsequently we ghost each other. Uh, your thoughts, opinions would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the question, Adam. Um, let's take this. Let's take this one step at a time because you asked several questions. First off, 
outside of a work or a professional setting. It is not possible to have a healthy relationship with a female if intimacy is not involved, okay? And there are a few reasons for this. Number one, either one or both people will start to develop romantic feelings for one another. And better than nine times out of 10, it is the man who develops these feelings rather than the woman. Number two, in a platonic relationship between a man and a woman, only one is going to get what they need out of the relationship. Men want sex and women want companionship. This is why guys don't like being in the friend zone. They're getting the companionship that they want, but they're not getting the action between the sheets that he needs. This is also why women don't like being in friends with benefits arrangements with men because she's getting all the sausage she wants, but not the commitment or companionship she actually needs. Now, the dichotomy here, Adam, is that men who are stuck in the friend zone continue to give the woman companionship in hopes that he that she develops feelings for him and it never, ever happens. On the other side of that coin, women who continue to give the guy all the bedroom action in hopes that one day he'll commit to her. Now, getting that commitment happens, happen, get, getting that commitment down the road, that happens far more often, that happens far more often for girls than a guy getting out of the friend zone and into the bed of his love, of his love interest. So if you're in a platonic relationship with a woman, she's getting what she wants out of a relationship without doing what she needs to keep the relationship. So in other words, she's getting the benefits of being in a relationship without actually doing what it takes to keep her man, which is obviously bedroom fun. This phenomenon, like I said, is otherwise known as the friend zone. And this is why, this is why girls love being in platonic relationships with guys that they are not sexually attracted to. They get their emotional needs met by the guy she's friend zoned, and then she gets her bedroom needs met by the bad boy with the devil may care attitude. The friend zone is what allows women, the friend zone is what allows women to satisfy both sides of their dating strategy, otherwise known as alpha seed beta need. Now there are a few other versions that are, you know, I guess not safe for YouTube, but I think we all know what I'm talking about here. But my question to you, Adam, is why do you need companionship from a woman without the intimacy? That is a feminine need. That's not a masculine need. I'm not, I'm not, you know, listen, I'm not trying to bag on you, but that's a feminine need. My second question is why are you taking, why are you taking girls out on dates without sexual intent? I don't think I have ever heard of a man taking a woman out he was not sexually interested in. Why are you giving women companionship and paying for dates without intimacy? Now, this isn't to say that just because you take a girl out on a date that she owes you intimacy. She doesn't owe you anything, just like you don't owe a woman anything if you if she sleeps with you. But I'm not exactly sure why you're wanting to go out to dinner with, with and go bowling with girls you have no in, you have no intention of sleeping with. Your situation, Adam. It sounds honestly, it sounds like the complete opposite of the situations most men find themselves in with women. Guy, listen, guys take women out on a few dates, and if the girl doesn't express express interest in sex. They either ghost her or they stick around and allow themselves to be put in the friend zone. But your situation is that girls are pressuring you for intimacy. And when you turn them down, they lose interest when most of the time, when most of the time they'll continue to let guys take them on dates and spend money on them without having to put out. The girls you're taking out don't want to friend zone you. They actually want to hook up with you. So Adam, listen, I need you to call back and clarify a few things for me. Number one, I need, I need to know why you want female companionship without fooling around. Okay. The second thing I need to know is why are you turning them down for intimacy? Are these women unattractive? Are they overweight? I mean, there's gotta be a reason you're not wanting to sleep with these girls. The third thing I need you to know is do you have any male friends? And the reason I need to know this is because if you do have male friends, I'll need to know why you value female companionship over male companionship. If you don't have male friends, I need to know why that is. Is there something about you that men don't trust? Do you not trust men? The fourth thing, the fourth thing I need to, the fourth thing I need to know about is you said not wanting to get serious with her. Do you mean in a sexual way or companionship way? So Adam, if you can call back and clarify these things, um, I would greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate that. Um, you know, listen, man, I, I appreciate you calling in and I know, I know it takes a lot of balls, but if you could call back and, and sort of clarify, uh, clarify some of these, some of these questions I have, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And look, I, I, I would absolutely positively have, uh, I would have no problem with answering, you know, your question, uh, your question on the air again, uh, just to clarify, Adam, 
just to clarify, I need to know why you want female companionship without fooling around, why you're turning these girls down for intimacy, do you have male friends, and are you trying to get serious in a sexual way or a companionship way? Uh, thanks for your call, Adam. I greatly appreciate that. Let us move to the next caller. Hey, Don and Dev. Um, it's Clarence W. I'm from Canada. So my question is, with the way everything's going, with this whole feminist movement, the whole left, you know, attacking traditional nuclear families, where do you guys see uh, things going in, let's say, 15, 20, even 25 years? Is the pendulum going to swing to the other side or we just going to keep devolving as a society. I'm kind of interested in this. So uh, thanks for the show. You guys are awesome and keep up the great work. Okay. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the call, uh, Clarence. That is a very, this is a very interesting question and <clears throat> I'm going to wait. I'm actually going to wait. See, Devin is under the weather uh, today. Um, she has a, she, I think she has like a, a sinus infection. Um, she's not, dude, she's not doing good. She's not doing good at all. Like she is, you know, she's feeling, she's feeling like crap, but, um, I'll wait until she comes back and then we'll answer that question because I think, I think there's, I think there's tremendous value. I think there's tremendous value, uh, in getting both of our points of view. Um, I listen, I know Clarence wanted an answer, but I think he wanted an answer from the both of us. And I want to, I want to respect his wishes in terms of, you know, getting an answer because he did say Don and Dev. So, uh, let's go to the next caller. Hey, this is Jarvis Jennings from Griffin, Georgia. Uh, I like the show, love the show, been following Donovan for quite some time. Uh, the only thing I had to comment was, the content that I've been seeing on Sigma males has never said that the Sigma male was above the alpha male. Uh, it says that it, they're actually equal to the alpha male. They just may not care to oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. lead a pack or to be in, have high titles or positions like the alpha male. For example, maybe the blue collar worker guy that makes it just as much as the guy that's the director of sales of a company. Um, and the comparison of that to Derrick Jackson is way different. Derrick Jackson basically sells dreams and tells the women that they are the way they are. For Sigma male, from what I've been researching, you can't just be the way you are. You have to be an alpha male first. You just, you know, most alpha males, they they go and approach women all the time and stuff like that. A lot of Sigma males may not. Women may approach them sometimes or try to talk to them sometimes. And I've seen this even with my own father, who is over six feet, makes six figures, has an NBA, et cetera, et cetera. So that's all I want to say. Thanks for the show, guys. I'm tuned in. Thanks for all the, everything. Peace. All right. Well, thank you for calling, Jarvis. Okay, so now we're back to the Sigma male discussion. Um, so let me address Jarvis's first assess uh, assertion that he has never heard or seen content about Sigma males that say they are greater than alphas. And Jarvis, if you're watching, if you were thinking, if, 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 if you were watching, I think it's obvious that you are new to this whole Sigma community. Now, granted, there are some graphs and charts that do say that Sigmas are equal to alphas, but most of what I have seen says that Sigmas are superior. Secondly, there are plenty of blue collar workers that make more money than a guy who's a director at sales. But does that mean he's a Sigma or that he's equal to the director of sales? Yes, there are blue collar workers who make more than white collar workers. These guys are the plumbers, millwright, welders, and other skills that could be acquired by going to, I don't know, maybe a vocational school. But I'm assuming Jarvis is talking about two men working for the same company. So let me offer this. Let, let, let me offer you this. So maybe the blue collar guy doesn't care about leadership positions because he knows he can't lead. Show me a man who does not want to advance his station in life. And I will show you a man who lacks ambition. Also to imply that it is somehow negative for men to want to strive for certain positions in life and characterize that as a title, that is a misnomer at best and an incorrect assertion at worst. If a man wants to rise through the ranks to become a CEO, that doesn't make him a slave to the title. That makes him a slave to his biological ambition to thrive and succeed. There's something, this is something that the Sigma male advocates like to tout as their battle cry. We don't care about titles. We don't care about women. We don't care about money or material things. Yet, whenever they're telling everyone their laundry list of quality, of their qualifications and exemplary traits, 
they're always the first to talk about how attractive being a Sigma male is to a woman and how much money Sigmas make compared to Alphas. Then to top it off, they are literally married to the title of Sigma. The more Sigmas tell the world they don't care, the more obvious it is that they do indeed care. Thirdly, I have no idea what Derek Jackson has to do with Sigmas, so I'm not exactly sure where he fits into this discussion. Fourth, you said that Sigma males may not approach women like alphas do. You are incorrect, Jarvis. Sigmas never approach women because they are afraid to. But they can't tell people they're afraid, so they have to say, well, we are introverted alphas. We don't chase women because it's beneath us. And why should we? The women just fly to us because of our mysterious disposition. And listen, man, like, um, listen, I'm sure your dad had women approach him, right? He's tall, I'm assuming good looking and all the rest of that, but I don't know what your father's personality was. For all I know, he might have been outgoing and gregarious. Here's something else to consider. The women your father grew up around are very different from the women that you and I are around, okay? Number two, I'm sure women did approach your father, but guess what, Jarvis? That is the exception. Women rarely approach men because they've never had to and they are ill-equipped to handle rejection. This is why we as men, we have to play the active role in the, the courting process and women play the passive role. This is biology. So calling my show and telling me, well, my dad was a Sigma male and women approached him all the time is merely attempting to use the exception as the rule. Newsflash Jarvis, women don't approach quiet men. They don't, they don't flock to men who give off a mysterious kind of vibe. No, they avoid these men like the plague because they're fucking creepy. I mean, if, 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 if I were James Harden or Tom Brady, then yeah, women would flock to me and I wouldn't have to say a damn thing. But for the rest of us, that's not how it works. If you want something in life, you have to be proactive to get it. You don't get the promotion at work by just sitting at your desk and maintaining status quo. You don't become successful by just doing nothing. You don't acquire and run your own business by sitting around your house and talking about it. And you don't attract women by being in the proximity, being in the proximity and not saying a damn thing to them. That's not how this works, Jarvis. Oh, wait a minute. Sigmas don't care about women. My bad. But all jokes aside, all jokes aside, here's the bottom line, Jarvis. Men who cling to this Sigma archetype are simply men who do not have the social aptitude to become alpha. Does this make them bad people? Of course not. Fortunately, social aptitude is something that men can actually learn. If... If a man puts himself in socially uncomfortable situations or situations that he's uncomfortable in for the explicit purpose of learning how to become more social and masculine, then he can become more socially liber uh, uh, literate. But men who are afraid to put themselves in uncomfortable situations so as to acquire a higher social aptitude, they need to shut their mouths about being more alpha than the alpha. Okay, these guys love, dude, these guys love to talk online and run their mouths in, in videos about this nonsense, but then in the real world, they're quiet, awkward, and reclusive. And because they can't come to grips with the fact that these kinds of men are not, they, they are not attractive to neither men nor women, they characterize this lack of social aptitude as mysterious. Uh, I appreciate the call, Jarvis, uh, but I hope you may, I, I really, really do, I mean, like, I really, really do uh, hope that you make it out of this, out of this, uh, out of this Sigma uh, community and start spending more time with men who actually take action rather than sitting around talking about what they actually are. It makes no sense. I appreciate the call, Jarvis. Um, let us go to our fourth caller. Hey, what's up, Donovan? I'm from, uh, I'm from Tennessee, and, uh, and I'm on here just wondering, person, what uh, kind of job there? Like, how can a, what can a man do, you know, to increase his wealth with, you know, when there's only certain jobs in that particular location, you know, and he can't even afford to move. So, what's up? Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> thanks for the question, Trav. And before I answer your questions, I want you to understand that I'm not trying to be mean-spirited or make light of your uh, of your situation here, but I am going to be direct and I'm not going to pull any punches here. You are, after all, a man and constructive criticism that is genuinely meant to help you and men like you shouldn't cause a long term, like a long term adverse reaction to this. So if it does, then that's a you problem. OK, 
You called and asked me for advice. I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you what you need to hear. Okay. I'm going to give you, listen, I'm going to give you to you straight with no chaser. And I'm going to warn you up front. This is probably going to make feel some type of way. This is probably going to piss you and a lot of other black men off, but believe it or not, that is a good thing. Okay. This means that I've hit a nerve, which is the only way a man in your situation is ever going to be motivated to change anything. Gentlemen, I'm here to tell you this caller and no shit on you, Trav, but this caller is a microcosm of why most black men in America don't succeed. Okay. Now before, you know, you, you understand what I'm saying? I'm going to start by saying caller that you appear to represent everything. Why every reason why a lot of men black, a lot of black men don't succeed. Number one, black men do not appear to understand that you cannot increase wealth. If you have no wealth, I know this isn't what you meant, but you said, but, 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 but you said it. And as a man, you need to be very careful about the things you say in the way that you say them. Okay. And what you said makes no sense at all because you cannot increase wealth. You do not have. I know that that sounds nitpicky, but it's the truth. Number two, you said when there's only certain jobs in that particular location. This is another problem with this, man. Black men, we gotta get we gotta do better than this. You cannot build nor you nor can you increase wealth at a job. Hell, you can barely build wealth in a career. So right off the bat, I can tell that your mindset is that you're looking to build and increase wealth working for someone else. That's not happening. And again, and I'm not trying to be mean spirited here, but there, there, there too many black men out here have zero clue that if you work a job, your job will see to it that you make them wealthy before you can make yourself wealthy, if ever. And there is no way that's happening. No way that's happening. And to be quite frank, that's a damn good business model, right? I mean, what kind of a, what kind of a business would thrive if its employees built wealth before the boss, right? Like a company wouldn't last very long if its subordinates racked in more cash than the actual company, right? This is why these pyramid schemes never work. Number three. You said you can't afford to move. Trav, you want to know what this tells me about you? It tells me you don't want it bad enough. Okay. This is another problem with black men, dude. We say we want something, but then when we start doing the math in terms of what it's going to take to get what we say we want, we make excuses. I can't afford to move. Ain't no jobs out here. Blah, 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 blah. Trav, if where you are in Tennessee were so bad and jobs are so shitty and all the rest of that, and you were motivated enough to change your life, then you would find a way to get the hell out of whatever podunk redneck town you're in. When I landed in Vegas, and I'll just, I'll bring it back, but stay with me here. When I landed in Vegas over a decade ago, I had $700 in my pocket and a 22 inch, a 22 inch suitcase full of my clothes. That's all I had. I crashed on a friend's house, uh, on a friend's couch for two months. No privacy, no space, no nothing. Had to share a bathroom, didn't have a place to put my things, so on and so forth. Now, I will be forever grateful to my friend for helping me out, but that's not where I wanted to be. I didn't want to be cramped up in a small apartment sleeping on a couch that made my back hurt when I woke up. So you know what I did, Trav? I made a choice. I made a choice to get off of my buddy's couch and get a place of my own. I made a choice to save my money and spend it wisely. I made a choice to be successful. And you want to know what jobs I had to work? I had to work in call centers. Okay, that's right. Telemarketing, getting hung up on, cursed out, called names. But guess what? I was the top earner nine out of the 14 months I was there, including a streak of five months in a row. That job was not glamorous at all, Trav. I wasn't wearing a suit to work every day. I was crammed in a cubicle form with 400 other people where there was barely enough elbow room between us. I wasn't selling yachts. I wasn't selling Lamborghinis. No, I was selling cell phone plans to senior citizens who could barely hear what the hell I was saying half the time. That job sucked and I fucking hated it but I stayed with it and made a boatload of money while everyone else was barely making enough to cover their rent. There was nothing special about me, Trav. There still isn't. But the difference was I chose to be successful while those who worked with me chose to complain about the job and what it wasn't doing for them. Too many brothers out here, too many brothers out here complain about the process of being successful and building wealth. This job is too hard. I'm not making enough money. My boss is racist. He doesn't like black people. Then we wonder why they're still living, still living at their mom in their mama's basement, living check to check. I'm not saying now, now. Now here's the thing, caller. I'm not saying what I did was easy. Far from it. But I knew what I had to do to change my situation. And after saving, and after having saved up, saved up almost seventy thousand dollars, I bought the first of my seven, count them, seven rental properties. And three years after I moved to Vegas, with nothing but the clothes on my back and a little bit of cash. I was able to give the finger to the call center and plant my flag and be my own boss. 
I clawed my way out of poverty. I clawed my way out of being broke. Most brothers ain't got that kind of drive. We ain't got that kind of motivation, man. We just want things to happen for us. This is another huge problem with us, right? You call me talking about, man, ain't no jobs out here and I can't move up, but I'm trying to build wealth. Bro, you can't afford to pay attention right now. You're talking wealth? Fam, you got to do a lot more than that before you start thinking about wealth. And your mindset points to a huge problem, especially with black men. As black men, for some reason, we, we always think the end game is always wealth and being a millionaire and being a baller and all the rest of that. But most men who think this way don't have a pot to piss in. They don't have a job and living at home with their moms, right? Black men, we're not interested in crawling. Now, nah, we're trying to sprint right out the gate. We're trying to go from rags to riches in two weeks. But I got news for you, bro. It ain't going down like that. Any man, regardless of skin tone, who has amassed wealth will tell you that building wealth takes a lot of work, a lot of patience, and a lot of time. You call me talking about, yo, I'm trying to build wealth, but I can't move. Ain't no jobs out here. What's up? The last thing you said, what's up? That tells me you're looking for a cheat code. You're looking for a shortcut. That's another problem with that. This another problem with brothers, man. We ain't trying to do the work. We want that quick, fast, easy money. We want to be that dude with more money in our pocket than our bank account. I got news for you, Trav. I can't help you there. Okay. I don't know nothing about no overnight success. I don't know nothing about living with my mama and complaining that there aren't any jobs out here, but still trying to get rich. But let me tell you what I do know. Number one, I've been doing this, what I'm doing, for over eight years. I started out writing for a couple of blogs and built the foundation for my brand. I didn't get on YouTube until I was, what, three, maybe four years into this whole Donovan Sharp thing. Number two, number two, up until recently, I worked at least 84 hours a week. And that's probably a conservative number. I, honestly, it was probably up around 90, 95. My, dude, my, dude, Devin has to come and drag my ass out of here every night. I work from sunup to till sundown and I only take breaks to lift, lift weights, eat, breathe, maybe go bowling, you know, to get out of the house, keep from going crazy. That's if I'm lucky. Number three, I didn't start making any real money at this until about three years ago. It took me over five years to start making the kind of money that allows me to reinvest in my business, pull my girl off of her job to work for me and have a few, cre a few creature comforts, a few little extras. Okay. Five years, Trav. Number four, number four, I have had to overcome countless setbacks. Oh my God, dude, I've had guys, I've had guys I've collaborated with spread lies about me. I've had dudes that I've worked, that I've worked with go on two, three hour rants about Donovan is this, Donovan is that. I've had guys dox me. I've had guys tell people where I live, dox my girl. These are guys I trusted. Okay. Guys that I worked with. You understand? You understand what I'm saying? These are guys that I trusted. I've been deplatformed multiple times on every platform that matters. Facebook three times, Twitter, th Twitter twice, Vimeo. Uh, dude, I've been banned off of Vimeo, which is a paid service twice. I've been banned on Instagram. You name it, Teachable, Kajabi. You name it, I've been banned off of it. And trust me when I tell you, Trav, it took a lot of work, a lot of time, and a lot of money to overcome and thrive in spite of these setbacks. And I can tell just by the town, just by the sound of your voice, what's up? You ain't got the stones to handle any of that. Like, listen, I'm not trying to pass judgment here, but you sound lazy. You don't really sound like the kind of man who can overcome, adapt, and thrive. This is another problem with brothers, okay? That's what it takes to build and increase wealth, but we ain't trying to do that. Nope. We want it to be easy. We want to take the easy way out. And like I said, you sound to me like someone who's probably looking for a shortcut. There's a content creator. You guys all know who this is. Uh, and Trav, maybe you don't know who he is, but there's a content creator out here. There's a content creator out here by the name of Obsidian. He's actually a pretty sharp guy, right? Very intelligent, excellent writer, but he's frustrated that he is not as successful as the rest of us. He doesn't say it out loud, and I gotta be honest, neither would I, but go on over and watch his channel. You go on over and watch his channel, and it is it will be plainly obvious to you that he is a frustrated individual. And that frustration derives from his lack of success. Now, there are many reasons he's not su successful, but the main reason, Obsidian does not adapt. He's been singing the same tired tune for seven, eight years. He hasn't changed his content, hasn't changed his approach, hasn't changed anything. All he does is complain about women. He fights with other content creators. He's always beefing with some dude about something. It's always angry man did this, Alan Roger Curry said this, or Donovan Sharp shouldn't be speaking on that. That's all he does. Now, you would think that a man with his level of intelligence would finally figure out that talking trash about other men for three and four hours a day is not what successful men do. Yet, seven years later, he's got the same bad habits and he's still broke. 
Yeah, he'll lie and tell everyone that he's a man of means, right? He'll say his girl is a dime and he bends her over her couch and this and that and the third. But people know he's full of shit because he doesn't show receipts. He never has. Would you like to know why? Because he doesn't have them, which points to another problem with black men, and that's lying about who and what we are. Black men are steady bragging about, man, I got all this money and my girl is a dime piece and this and that and the other, when it's obvious they're being dishonest. And men who lie about who and what they are are never successful, ever. So it should really come as no surprise that Obsidian isn't where he thinks he deserves to be. Then he calls himself a dating coach, but then turns around and asks his audience to send him money for his light bill. That's not something a man of mean does, and then he wonders why he's not successful. And again, again, while there are many reasons for his lack of success, the main reason is that he hasn't evolved. He does not realize that the content that people want is a moving target. What people wanted a year ago isn't necessarily what they want today. That's just all there is to it. And by the way, I mean, listen, if Obsidian gets a hold of this, I fully expect him to do a response video, which will probably be another two hours. He'll tell everyone that he does have money and that his girl is hot, but the only receipts he'll show can be found on <laughs> really Google images. Then he'll talk about my girl looking like trailer trash, and maybe she does. Maybe she does. But I do know this. I do know this. He couldn't keep his eyes off of her when I was, when I was at his crib back in 16, so I guess trailer trash is his type. I don't know. Stay tuned for a response video. Should be a doozy. Caller, let me ask you something. Let me ask you something here. Do you think Alan, do you think Alan Roger Curry didn't have to overcome and adapt to an ever-changing market to build the mo mode one into the empire it is today? Do hmm? you think Alpha Male's strategies didn't have to deal with adversity on his way to where he is now? you think Kevin Samuels didn't encounter a few roadblocks he had to smash through in order to build the brand he has today? Caller, your voice sounds much the same way. You sound lazy, you sound defeated, and you appear to be looking for a way to make easy money. Donovan, Donovan, tell me how to get this money. What's up? Can't help you there, bro. I got nothing for you. You asked the wrong guy for a couple of reasons. Number one, I'm not wealthy, at least not yet. And number two, I don't have the cheat codes because they don't exist. But what I can tell you is that if you really want to be successful in life, if you really want to change your situation, then you need to free yourself from the mental from the mental shackles that constrain most black men. And guess what? I can help you with that. So listen up. <clears throat> Cuz I'm about to drop some I'm about to drop some next level game on you, right? Number 1, get your priorities in line. Don't buy the rims if you haven't bought the car. Don't buy the 82-inch flat screen if you live with your mama's house or at your homeboy's crib. Number 2, you got to crawl before you can walk, Trav. You're going to have to work a job you probably won't like for a while. This is part of the process, and if I can do it, I know you can do it. Number three, move. If you hate the area in Tennessee you live so much, then do something about it. Move. Get the hell out of there. And I don't want to hear I can't afford to move. Can't is nothing. Can't is your enemy. You're a fucking man. Figure it out. If you want it bad enough, you'll find a way. Number four, you need to get very comfortable with delayed gratification. Building wealth and increasing wealth, that takes time. I've been at this for over eight years and I'm still not wealthy. Now, I'm certainly on my way, but I'm not even there yet. You're gonna need to put in sweat equity, which means work. Work takes time. Impatient men are always broke. Number five, adversity is a mathematical certainty. If you cannot handle adversity, you will never make, you'll, ne you'll never make anything of yourself. Don't be, like most ble don't be like most black men out here who give up at the first sign of trouble. Work through the issues, Trav. Stick to it and be ready for the next speed bump because trust me when I tell you, they are a coming. Number six, if you don't encounter adversity, you're doing it wrong. You got to remember, Trav, nothing worth having is going to be easy. And if you accomplish something relatively easy with minimal effort and minimal adversity, understand that that success is temporary. This is where the phrase, uh, what do they call it, easy come, easy go comes from. This isn't to say that something you worked hard for can't be snuffed out in the blink of an eye. But when you put in sweat, sweat equity, which is time, money, attention to detail, whatever you've built is much more likely to withstand hardships and misfortune. Borton, using myself as an example. I'll use myself as an example. Okay? I have outside forces trying to, trying to destroy what I've built all the time. All the time. But because I have a deep catalog in the way of over 200 articles written and thousands of videos created, it is very difficult for my adversaries to take me down. Now, it's not impossible. It's not impossible. It's been done before. But because I've built a solid foundation with hard work, steadfast, steadfast discipline, and intelligent planning, it is extremely difficult to stop me, and I continue to grow to this day despite all that adversity. 
So, Trav, listen, man, I hope I pissed you off, man. I hope I hurt your feelings, and I hope you. I hope I have you saying to yourself, who the fuck does this nigga think he is? Because this means that you know there's truth in what I've just told you. Are you saying to yourself, well, I'm not lazy, I'm not afraid of our hard work, or I'm not stuck in the typical mindset that hinders black, black men from succeeding? Then prove it. Prove it. We have to break ourselves, like I said, we have to, black men in particular, we have to break ourselves of the mental shackles that hold us back each and every day. Unfortunately, most black men have no idea that they're really a victim of their own mindset. And it's a damn shame. Thanks for calling, Trev. Okay, let's go to our last caller. Um, let's go to caller number five. Uh, I think it's somebody from uh, uh, Canada. Hey, Donovan. It's uh, Daniel from Edmonton, Alberta. I just wanted to let you know that you have the most ex exquisite enunciation. Pardon my stutter. And it's a pleasure to listen to you. It's very easy to understand what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'd say you went to Oxford uh, really, uh, <laughs> That's funny. A lot of, a lot of people could use a bit of practice with that. You nailed it. It's very nice to listen to you speak. It's very easy to share that with uh, others who are English as a second language speaker and have a hard time understanding English. So uh, I think with that, it's going to help you make inroads into other non-English markets. Fantastic job. Awesome content. Thanks and keep it up. Okay. Uh, thanks, Daniel. I appreciate that. Yeah, I've always had a, um, I've always had a great speaking voice. Uh, a lot of people have told me that I could be on radio or TV and all the rest of that stuff. I never went to broadcasting school. I never took classes on radio or speech or anything like that. I've just always had a great speaking voice. My voice inflections, my change in tone, my pronunciation, all of that just comes natural to me. I guess I can, I don't know, man. I guess I can probably thank my mom for that uh, because when I was younger, and I didn't use proper English. She used to crack the back of my hand <laughs> with a wooden spoon and say, let's try that again. So, for example, if I told my mom, I ain't got no homework, crack, let's try that again. Oh, I don't have any homework. Or if I say, I ain't got no money, crack, let's try that again. Okay, I don't have any money. Plus, plus, I talk a lot of shit about my parents, <laughs> but both of my parents have exceptional speaking voices as well. My father has an exceptional speaking voice, and so does my mother. Uh, listen, both my mother and father have a strong command of the English language. Their voice inflections, their cadence, the the the, the perfect pronunciation, that's something that I grew around my entire life. So that, that just naturally rubbed off on me. So, you know, the wooden spoon and my parents are the reason why I talk the way I do. And for the record, Daniel, no, I did not go to Oxford, but uh, I think it's I think it's uh, <laughs> I think it's pretty cool that uh, that you think that I did. Um I don't know. I guess is Oxford is Oxford like a broadcasting school or is it a speaking school? I don't know. But uh, that's a very high compliment, Daniel. I appreciate I appreciate that you that you can uh, respect and enjoy uh, my uh, my speaking voice. I pre I appreciate that very much. Very very nice compliment. Okay. Um, let us take a look at the chat. <clears throat> ah, uh, Dre Raven. Dre Raven says Don is spot on. I moved to Tucson when I was 29. I stayed with my parents while I busted my ass tempting at whatever gig was available. Two months in, I was hired on by one of my temp assignments doing marketing for a financial advisory firm, moved into a place of my own within eight months. When the market crashed in 08, 09, I threw myself into doing the very best I could with whatever gig I could get. I worked for a call center. I worked for the call center of an online school, then as an exterminator, uh, and a cop, wow, and a copper mine until the financial industry recovered and got back into that. When I decided to get the hell out of working for stockbrokers, I took what was supposed to be a one month temp job at an insurance company. That one month gig ended up, uh, that one month temp gig lasted two and a half years. I was then recruited by one of their competitors, and seven years later, I am an expert in a field I entered as a dude who took a one month data entry gig. You must do the work. Real talk. Real motherfucking talk. Real talk. Uh, Rebel5150 says, my voice, my speaking voice is average at best. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, we can't all be me, right? We plan all be me. You know that. You, you, we, 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 we can't all be me. Wow, very uh, uh, inspiring story, man. Very inspiring story. I appreciate that very much. Um, this is actually an announcement uh, that I probably should have made a little earlier. A couple of announcements that I'm going to make. Um, you guys all know. 
about the uh, about the play-by-play -play breakdown. So Tuesdays and Thursdays at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, exclusively on Sharpstream. I will be breaking down the entire season of The Ultimatum. Um, I think I'm three or four episodes in, but uh, so far so good, man. It is it has it has it has shown us a lot of uh, RP truths, a lot of red pill truth. Uh, Devin says I learned HTML from a book. Yeah, Devin, dude, she is. Oh my god, she's fucking spectacular at what she does. But uh, yes, if you want to, if you want to tune in for free. You can watch, listen, you can watch my dating show breakdowns for free. Listen, I'm telling you, I'm telling you what day and what time to tune in. All you got to do is download the Sharpstream app, guys. That's all you got to do. Absolutely free. The app is free. You can watch for free. If you want access, if you want access to the replays, that's that simple. Guys, less than 16 cents a day. Less than 16 cents a day, five bucks a month. Actually, I don't think it's going to be that. I don't think it's going to be that low for a while. For a limited time, you can get access for five bucks a month. Become a patron, or, or become a member of Sharpstream. Now, Patreon is really for people who like the podcast and the dating show breakdown. Sharpstream is for people who they like. The, they, they 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 don't mind listening to me drone on now for over for for now for three hours. Um, uh, but but they got to have those dating show breakdowns. So Sharpstream, you look five bucks a month on Sharpstream. Give you access to the dating show breakdowns. If you want access to the dating show breakdowns and tens of thousands of hours of free content, or not free content, of content, uh, that is for that is for Patreon. Um, one last announcement. One last announcement. I am announcing the very next, the very next course. And this may very well be my signature course. On July 28th. On July 28th, that's two months from now, I will be releasing my new course, the new Power Couple Blueprint. The new Power Couple Blueprint. This is a modern formula for real relationship success. Uh, Devin and I, Devin and I, we are going to work very, very hard uh, on, on putting this together for you guys. We are going to take you from A to Z on how to build a long-lasting, sustainable, long-term relationship. Um, I'm very proud of my relationship. Um, I'm very proud of my relationship. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of my girlfriend. And again, I don't take anything for granted because if she fucks up, I will, I can and will be the fuck up out of here. And that's part of what our, makes our relationship great. The reason why she continues to put in the effort to look good and bring value to my life is because she knows that if she slacks off even for a little bit, I'm out the door. Well, it's the same for me. If I lose my edge, she has the right to upgrade. I don't want to give I don't want to give too much of it away, but if you want to get notified when the new Power Couple Blueprint is released, go to donovansharp.com/blueprint. donovansharp.com/blueprint. Put in your very best email and you will continue to get updates. I will be revealing what is going to be in the course. It's dude, it's going to be it, 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 it's a video course. We're going to, dude, we're going to do, we're going to role play. We're going to do skits. I'm going to take live action uh, videos of Devin and I interacting in real life, in, in real life situations. Uh, you guys do not want to miss this. Um, it is called the Power Couple Blueprint Relationship Course. We are also going to be doing companion podcasts at the end of the at the end of the course sales, just like MLD does. I don't know how many there's going, I don't know how many there are going to be. I don't know how long they're going to last, but there will be companion podcast. And of course, you guys know I have a shitload of products. I am going to add a shitload of bonuses. The Power Couple Blueprint Relationship Course drops on July 28th to get on the waiting list. Go to donovansharp.com slash blueprint today. Uh, excellent, excellent episode. Very good episode. Uh, I can see that my numbers kind of suffered uh, because, of course, uh, Myron and Fresh <laughs> went live. But uh, shout out to them. They'll uh, they'll catch me on the replay. Um, thank you guys very, very much uh, for tuning in. Uh, that is going to do it. Oops. Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Hold up. Sorry about that, guys. Hang on. There we go. That is going to do it. For this edition, for this episode of TSR Live, thank you guys very, very much for tuning in. I appreciate your support. And um, hell, man. Thanks, guys, for watching, man. We'll see you next time. Take care.